Welcome, sir, Dr. Suresh, sir. Suresh, respond. Yes, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Please welcome, sir. So we start uh, one, one minute. Sir, please. Let them join. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. You can start uh, one minute. Oh, yes, sir. So this is yeah. Yeah, we want to go ready again. Doctor Bobby, we can start I think. Time is almost 10 1. Yes, sir. Because, uh, uh, yeah, probably uh, Dr. LK Singh will join immediately. So, no need to wait for him. Okay, sir. We are waiting for the reception. And Dr. Suresh, the responders are also joined. Yes, sir. Okay. No need to wait. We can let us start. Okay. Very good morning to all. This is greetings from YMCA College of Physical Education. I am very to very happy to welcome you all for the international conference on uh, modern approach on anthropometric nutrition and growth development. Let us start 
with the word of prayer by gladi kirbaka sir assistant professor sir please thank you dr bobby let us pray a beloved father in heaven we thank you for this wonderful and blessed day i said in the Bi holy bible first seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you we seek and need your presence and blessings for this conference in the journey of 100 years of imca college of physical education you have blessed college in all the ways thank you father in this centenary year of imca college of physical education you have blessed us to be the part of imca college at this juncture lord we pray for all the panelists experts and alumni of this college and all the faculty and all the participants those who are participating in this international conference god bless all of them we submit everything into your mighty hands lord be with us i ask everything in the name of jesus amen amen thank you sir uh, i am deeply honored to welcome today's chief guest for this international conference professor dilip kumar dora former vice chancellor lnip gwalior he is specialized in the sports psychology sports biomechanics and in the field of hockey sir on behalf of imca college of physical education Bobby, on my personal i'm uh, here i'm here to introduce yes, yes. can i on my personal question? behalf i extend a warm welcome to you sir for this international conference welcome you sir i feel much privileged to welcome all the iconic person personality in the field of physical education as a guest of honor professor ej jacob former director of physical education university of calicut kerala my heartily welcome you sir it gives me immense pleasure to welcome dr suresh h des pande director hvp mandal amravati maharashtra welcome you sir and also i am happy to welcome professor lucy vergis former principal government physical education college calicut kerala welcome you ma'am it takes a great honor to welcome dr lk singh former principal Abhirati Institute of Physical Education, Gowati Hassan. Welcome you, sir. On behalf of IMC College of Physical Education, on my personal behalf, I welcome all the guests of honors. And this is the time to welcome the resource person and they are going to enrich our knowledge where they are specialized. I would like to welcome first resource person, Dr. Professor Van, Alma Almata University Indonesia welcome you sir it it is a, my privilege to welcome the second resource person dr forman konkman department of physical education qatar university doha qatar i feel happy to welcome the third resource person dr anup adhigari exercise physiologist level 4 anthropometrist red cross training partner isak canada i take the honor to welcome the fourth resource person dr lee associate professor institute of social science studies university of malaysia on behalf of the ymca college of physical education on my personal behalf i welcome all the resource persons i formally welcome honorable justice jb koshi national president ymca and honorable justice korean joseph chairman and also i take the pride and honor to welcome our great administrator mr j benjamin franklin correspondent and secretary welcome you sir i am profoundly delighted to welcome the convener of this international conference dr george abraham perfect captain who is always leading crew in the successful way under his guidance we all getting the chance to exhibit talents thank you sir and welcome you sir i take the opportunity to welcome mr 
Raju George, Administrative Estate Manager for this international conference. Welcome you, sir. I am glad to welcome Mr. Moses, Executive Secretary, and Mr. S. Jagan, Project Secretary. Welcome you, sir. I feel proud to welcome the com committee members of this international conference, the soft members of this YMCA College of Physical Education of, for this conference. Welcome you all. Last but not least, I welcome all my professional friends, participants, students for this international conference. Once again, a huge, huge welcome to you all. Welcome you all. Thank Over you. Adam. Now, I am Dr. K. Jyoti Dayanandan. With the permission of all the members who are present here, I take the pleasure in introducing our today's chief guest, the Honorable Vice former Vice Chancellor of LNCPE, Professor Dilip Dreyaji. He has been serving as Vice Chancellor of Lakshmi National Institute of Physical Education, Category 1, deemed to be University, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Gwalior, from the year 2015 to 2020. I have been knowing Sir since 1984, where I have been seeing his growth and development as being the professional friends. The, he has played hockey tournament for Madhya Pradesh in the National Hockey Championship in the year 1979 to 1980 and represented Jivaji University hockey team in All India and Zonal Inter-University tournaments. He has also played as a guest player for yes. and against Australian youth hockey team, Malaysian hockey team, Sri Lankan hockey team. He has <coughs> authored four books in physical education and sports and taken 38 research papers and presented in pre-Olympic World Congress, International Conference, Indoor Rock Cultural Exchange Program in physical education and sports at USA, Australia, South Korea, Hong Kong, France, Switzerland, and China. He had also gone and visited various sports complexes in the, in the stadiums in Italy, Germany, and Australia. He has got 60 research papers presented in the national conference in seminars, which was under, uh, I mean, at the various levels, and also presented 70 research papers and articles being published in international and national journals, respectively. He has got 21 PhD scholars will be guided under him and also supervising eight under him. And he has got a vast experience of having taught for 28 years for PG and as a whole of almost 30 years. And he has headed Department of Physical Education in Banaras Hindi University and headed the university department for four terms since 1997 to 2015 till he attained the post of Vice Chancellor of LNIPE. He is also recipient of many awards and he has received most dedicated vice chancellor award in the year 2020 in golden aim award for excellence and also a recipient of lifetime achievement award towards its contribution in field of physical education and sports psychology in 2021 being the vice chancellor he has also got an opportunity of chairing and managing board of kendra vidyalaya number no. 1 gwalior from 2015 to 2020 and some of it, I would like to just mention it in front of you. He has been the one behind to bring 12B status for deemed to be university by University Grants Commission, has brought A double plus, that is A plus plus grade from NAC with the CGPA of 3.79. And today this institution is categorized as number one deemed university and being granted autonomous. And it is also a recipient of excellent Institute of Physical Education in India in the 11th National Physical Education Summit and awarded in the year 2017. This institution was granted membership of International Association of Physical Education, Cultural and Sports University in 2019. At, at, and he has also been the member behind to get MOU with different universities abroad. Some of them are Germany, Australia, Japan, uh, uh, then Bangalore, Vyasa, and then Swarnim University, Gujarat, uh, Gujarat. He had been the member of various councils and the committee, and some of them are one as All India Council of Sports, Government of India Governing Body, Sports Authority of India, New Delhi. He had been the member of different committees for enhancement of sports culture in India, Mayas, Government of India, 
nominated member of selection committee for the award of Rajiv Gandhi Khel uh, Award, Ratna, and also the Arjun Award in the year 2015 under the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Yeah, he has been the managing council of South Zone Specific Association of Sports Psychology and China from 2014 to 18. Like that, he has got many membership also. He had been the member of UGC Review Committee for Spot Inspection of uh, Lakshmi Bhai National Institute in the year October 2009, uh, 2009, and had been the expert committee for physical education UGC Special Assistant Award and DRS in the year 2009 to 2014. He had been the standing committee member for National Commission for Education through Information and Communication Technology MHRD in the year 2009 to 2012. And uh, he has also organized many uh, South Zone and the uh, All India tournaments under his leadership and been the expert committee for physical education evaluation norms committee, National Council of Teacher Education, had been the expert committee for physical education in different university, had been the board of studies member and the academic council member in different universities of India, had acted as resource person in UGC refresher course, which had been held in various places in India had been the member of National Coaching Commission, um, and that is ICHPER USA in 1995 to 99, and uh, has got many more credits of being the official in sport in Commonwealth Games held in New Delhi in 2010, and uh, being the General Secretary for Sports Psychology Association of India till uh, 2019. And uh, what else to say, sir, we are very much privileged to have you in our midst this morning. And may I take the pleasure in inviting you to deliver the inaugural address. May I request the honorable uh, former vice chancellor and present professor in BHU, Professor Billy Guria, sir. Please. Thank you, Jyoti. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. We are, you are audible. First of all, I convey my great regards and thanks to Dr. George Abraham, who has uh, invited me on this platform where 100 years of uh, celebration is being conducted. And we, you know, we everybody, we know we physical education is, this is the pioneer place from where the physical education actually started in India. And we are very lucky enough to be on this platform. And I can see the experts and uh, the guest of honors who are Professor Jacob and uh, Professor Desh Pandey, uh, Lucy Madam, Professor Vargas, and um, uh, Dr. L. K. Singh. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, Professor Suresh Deshpande is a Padam Shri. He's a second Padam Shri after uh, Professor P. M. Joseph in India, and great contribution he has done in uh, in uh, Amravati, and uh, he is one of the pillar in India uh, because we uh, I count so many. Um, I have uh, they are. Uh, our mentors to whom we uh, by seeing them watching them their act and what type of the the way they used to administer the institute and the other thing i had a chance to meet him only once when i was the selector of the indian university hockey team and uh, we went to his amravati institute that there was the selection committee on the other side now we'll come to the ymc and they are all seniors i luckily i, I am very unfortunate i could not meet all of them in person, but I have a great regard because I heard all other resource persons, uh, guests of honors. Uh, see, YMCA, what a great name, is the base of physical education in India, and we all, you know, all credit goes to the first and former principal, Dr. S.C. Puck. We used to study his books. He is the one, the pioneer who established physical education in India. And uh, luckily, I'm a part of history now uh, because participating in the 100th celebration of YMCA. That is a great thing for my life. And I'm very thankful for to the principal. This uh, YMCA um, got a very good base. And I know a few of them, you know, full teachers uh, personally also. And uh, I know... 
Professor Robson always used to talk about YMCA. Uh, he was my teacher and as well as uh, Professor Thomas. Uh, he used to talk about um, uh, J.P. Thomas. He always, whenever he used to visit in LNIP, that time it was LCP, though we used to, uh, I think there only I met from uh, Madam Vargas also uh, once. Um, and uh, Hearty congratulations to George, the way you are conducting throughout the year, different international period, at the international platform, different programs, calling experts from throughout the world at the global level, uh, involving throughout the country. And uh, there's not uh, the days are not far. That is my best wishes to you and to your team also. Key you become itself himself with a, a start with a deep university and can be a future university of physical education in India. Because the way you are working on your the way, the way, the base you are having, uh, that is uh, very good. Because uh, physical education, YMCA is the only place from where the our uh, first how to promote sports and the Olympic movement also started. That is a history, and this is a fact also. And in 1987, you got the autonomy of YMCA. That is the best part of YMCA. And YMCA uh, um, is virtue of reports, different sciences on humanity through uh, physical education, health education, recreation activity, and it allied sciences. While you can guys recognized properly by the uh, National Council as well as the Madras University has recognized them and offered and granted them autonomy. So uh, I'm very happy to be here with you. And uh, I, the way I can see the great, uh, your uh, resource person, Professor Van, Professor Anupadgari, they got a Professor Freeman, um, uh, for, uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Lee. They are got a big name in the profession. And I uh, their deliberation will contribute a lot uh, in the field uh, for the those who are participating in this uh, conference. Uh, and now I can talk about uh, Dr. George Abraham. Some, he is a young chap and energetic. And uh, he got a very great vision. And, um, you are sitting here, but I am telling you to all, I'm sharing my personal experience and the, my, my thought uh, with all my colleagues and seniors, so many seniors are sitting here, like Professor Jacob and all. So they, uh, you are very democratic, you listen to everyone and then uh, you take the decision and your vision is always very clear to take the YMCA at the top heights, not only in India, but at the global level, you are very popular among the staff whether it's a teaching staff, non-teaching staff, and uh, even the AMB students, that is a great thing. And you, uh, himself is a, Dr. George is himself is a very good academician. He's a researcher. I have seen him presenting his, when he used to present paper, the different conferences and, and uh, for research and uh, very good researcher. And he got a very good relation with everyone, not only in the YMCA, in the Madras, but in the India also, in abroad also. We also came in touch with him last long back and, and still we are keeping in touch and he always uh, uh, takes suggestions also and he always uh, Always think about the development of YMCA. That is the great thing. And uh, uh, I'm sure, and on my life, my wish also, he, uh, instead of affiliating to some university, you must resolve yourself, must be a university because you got a hundred years of background. Because LNIP also now, they got a sexy four years now. But uh, you got a hundred years of background and uh, from where different. Uh, uh, so you can do it. I, I hope sincerely. Hope. Your team is very good, and uh, I want to remember here, uh, Dr. Robson's son. Also, he was in faculty in YMCA, and he was very good, close friend of mine. When we used to play tennis uh, uh, in uh, LNIP, when the Professor Robson was the dean there, and so unfortunately he's uh, no more in this. Uh, uh, but uh, he was also a great man, and we missed him. I remembering him on this day and see regarding the conference, this international conference on modern approach on kin and supernatural and nutrition of the growth and development. The very good topic you have chosen and this is a requirement because everything is ignored in India nowadays. The, the new term has come, 
sports sciences. But uh, if you see our background and if you see our, uh, we, we have been taught uh, by our teachers and even we, when we came to become a teachers, we are teaching uh, allied sciences. The allied science is nothing but the um, sports sciences. Yes. Now, like me, I have started a faculty of sports science in LNIP. I have introduced there and I have made four uh, verticals, four departments, five departments, like uh, Department of Sports Psychology, Department of Exercise Physiology, Department of Sp um, Sports Biomechanic, Department of Health Sciences. Like this, I have made the different uh, faculty, uh, uh, the department, different faculty to specialize in a particular field. Because the sports nutrition is a base nowadays for the each sports person, and uh, if without this, uh, if, and, uh, you cannot exist. And uh, what to eat, when to eat, uh, how is going to help? And this uh, uh, government of India have a lot of schemes, and I think YMCA must apply for that. Uh, take a center of this uh, sports science center in YMC also. They got a grant. They will hundred percent going to help you because you have everything, whatever you are fulfilling all the requirement. And there, they have only in India one uh, National Institute of Nutrition in Bangalore. They are being paid, uh, granted money from the ministry. But on the other side, there's no other one. So I, I request you, especially the George, uh, to please take a step further and uh, meet the ministry and take the base of that. Because you have got that opportunity, you can avail this opportunity. The last, I am very thankful to all the uh, organizing committee members, especially uh, Dr. George Abraham from the core of my heart and my great regards to all uh, my seniors uh, we, whom we used to heard uh, when we used to uh, like, uh, uh, you know, Professor Desh Pandey, Professor Jacob and uh, Professor uh, uh, L.K. Singh and Dr. Uh, uh, Lucy and uh, Lucy Madam. Uh, so and all experts and uh, my best wishes are there for the grand, grand, grand success of this international conference. And you must be having deliberations and uh, recommendation. You must have must have a recommendation for these. But these recommendation helps at the uh, this type this type of international conferences having uh, their recommendation helps the ministry uh, because everybody is participating not only from India from abroad and whatever outcome will come from this conference it will be beneficial for the Indian sports and physical education in India and Indian fraternity. Thank you very much once again especially George, thank you very much. Thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your inaugural address. Uh, I think you, are, uh, you have a very good relationship with all other uh, founders of uh, the LNIP and the formal principal of our college, uh, Joseph sir and other uh, JP Thomas sir. Thank you for your wonderful inaugural uh, address sir. As a token of our uh, appreciation, kindly accept our e-certificate sir. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, thank you sir. Now it's a great privilege and honor uh, to uh, introduce the great alumni of our YMCA College of Physical Education and the guest of honor, Professor E. Jacob, the alumni and the old student of YMCA College of Physical Education in the year 1953. In After completion is physical education program in YMCA College of Physical Education, in 1956, he joined as a physical director in Marthamas College, uh, Kota Mangalam. And 1956 to 63, he worked as a lecturer in physical education in Veterinary College. In 1963, he worked as a lecturer in physical, ed physical education in Medical College, Kotayam. In 1967, he joined University of Kerala as a deputy director of physical education. 
and he had a very good experience to visit the various countries uh, government of india ministry of education as a part of german academy exchange program he was deputed from the government of india to germany for pg training in satrapak university and he had a great advanced training in athletic course in nanbarka uk and had advanced training in us in volleyball and tennis and training under the national cricket coach ag ram singh in cricket coaching and during his service he visited so many countries and equipped himself in so many advanced training in tennis cricket and so on after he come back again he joined as joined the department of college and education government of kerala served as a lecturer in physical education in trandrum agriculture college and trandrum engineering college such a potential person in our mini, in our midst as a guest of honor on behalf of the ymc college of physical education and the correspondent secretary the principal and all the faculty members and must and my personal behalf i give a great warm welcome to professor e jacob to deliver the guest of honor speech thank you. sir welcome you sir in 1953 68 years ago i was at byms college pursuing my studies i was overwhelmed when i got a first class that actually triggered my enthusiasm to update my professional studies in the university of sarbrooken lovebro college england and george williams college united states of america I was singularly lucky and blessed to got trained by world's amazing outstanding coaches like Bruno Hamilton American Olympic coach in athletics in volleyball by Jim Coleman American Olympic volleyball coach Jerry Lang American professional tennis coach and in cricket AJ Ram Singh national cricket coach besides i was a post graduate of political science from university of kerala thanks to my academic professional and specialization qualifications i could do a good work as a lecturer in physical education in marathanishas college kodamangala medical college kotayam agriculture college trivandrum and government engineering college trivandrum for 15 over 15 years i served as a lecturer in physical education in 1967 university of kerala selected me as assistant director of physical education and i had my probation satisfactorily completed there in 1969 university of calicut selected me as its director of physical education over two decades precisely 21 years i served in that capacity with distinction even in its infancy calicut university was regarded as one of the outstanding universities in india for sports and physical education i am indeed indirectly inducted to vibes college in kindling in me a deep passion for sports and physical fitness that is even reflected in my body stature at the age of 19 i am grateful to Dr. George Abraham, the dynamic person principal of YMC College, for organizing and conducting 
the centenary celebrations of this premier institution in a meticulous way, in the most appropriate way, and give me a chance to sing peons of praise to my beloved alma mater. Thank you very much. Okay. It is my honor to thank Professor E.J. Jacob for gracing this occasion as one of the guests of honor and delivering the valuable speech in modern approach on in field of physical education for experience from India. Thank you, sir. On behalf of OMC College, I would like to present an e-certificate to Professor E.J. Jacob for the esteemed presence. Kindly accept it, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now it gives me an immense pleasure. I have a very pleasant duty of introducing our guest of honor, Dr. Suresh H. Deshpande, General Secretary of National Association of Education and Sports India. Dr. S. H. Deshpande needs number of introduction. At the occasion, demands here its brief. Presently, sir is serving Hanuman Vivayam Prasar Mandal as director. He is an author of a book called Physical Education in Asian India, which still stands as a valuable treasure in the field of physical education. He is a, such a great leader, and he led lead his students and youth team of HVP Mandal to international students and youth camp Wurzburg, Germany in the year 1972 at the time of Olympic Games at Munich. He also guided his students to attend International Congress on Movement and Sports in Women's Life held at University of Javaskaila, Finland in the year 1987. His students were so fortunate to have him as their mentor. He held the membership International Council of Sports Science and Physical Education, Berlin, Germany. And also, he is the member of the Association for International Sports for All Germany. He is also NGO advisory member on UNESCO Minutes for ICH and TSG. He has attended UNESCO organized meeting at Berlin in the year 2013. On behalf of the management, principal, staff, and student, also on my personal behalf, I welcome our guest of honor for this international conference. Hearty welcome, sir. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please unmute. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. George. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Dilip Daroj Dureya for uh, giving a few words of but I would like to uh, make some connection. Is, uh, do you get me? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Dilip Dreyar asked me to have, uh, what do you say, Padma Shri. I am. Uh, oh, sir, that is Vedya, sir. That is Vedya, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, that is Vedya, sir. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, dear friends and my professional colleagues, on the occasion of the uh, centenary of the Grand uh, Historical Institute, YMCA College of Physical Education, Chennai, I wish you all happy centenary and its successful celebration. It's my privilege to participate in the celebration. I am overwhelmed to observe in this celebration, involvement of star personalities in the field of sports, including Olympians and stalwarts of physical education field. Legacy of outstanding personalities like Dr. S.C. Buck, C.C. Abraham, Dr. Howard, P.M. Joseph, 
J.P. Thomas, S.D. Chopre, A.K. Singh, Dr. Rapson, Sheila Stephen, and now Dr. George Abraham has been a real strength of, and special characteristics of this college. We remember at this moment, all those in the past who had given strong leadership to this college. I have been curiously watching since half a century, a slow and steady development of this college. It is now enjoying autonomous status and caters to the need of producing technical manpower in the country. I wish for the continued ascending graph of progress of this college for the years to come. I am proud to mention here that this is my second term in a decade to enjoy such a participation in centenary celebration of the two great institutions. The first incidence was in the year 2013 when another great institution in physical education and traditional sports of India had celebrated its centenary by organizing a global conference on traditional physical culture, sports and games at Amravati in Maharashtra. It was a curtain raising event of the centenary year of Sri Anman Vayam Prasarat Mandal, that is HVPM in short. This event received patronage of six international organizations, including UNESCO Regional Office at Delhi, participation of representatives from about 30 different countries, apart from locals, was a special feature of the event. Assessing its dedicated work with missionary zeal in traditional physical culture of India for more than 100 years, the UNESCO had granted status of accredited NGO advisor to the intergovernmental committee formed by UNESCO for the safeguarding and promotion of traditional sports and games under the list of intangible cultural heritage. The institution is thus in a direct contact with UNESCO and other allied organizations. The College of Physical Education run by HVPM at Amrauti is now a multi-faculty autonomous A-grade college. There is added advantage of having courses like MCA, MBA, uh, MCOM, MPA, and MA Yoga Shastra under one roof for the promotion of interdisciplinary research and producing technical manpower. The HVPM and the YMCA are contemporary institutions of early 20th century and continued working on voluntary basis for such a long period uh, in the common field of physical education and sports. Both of them have their own ideologies and autonomy in their functioning. They have proved their time tested credentials and contribution to the field. There are several institutions, colleges and subject universities presently functioning in India successfully in the country and expecting to be merited in international ranking. Of course, a lot is to be done to achieve this ranking. Utilizing the centenary celebration platform of this historic college, I am glad to share my observations with you all. Please allow me to do so. My observations and my suggestions are as follows. Number one, most of the leading institutions and professional colleges are functioning in isolation. There should be exchange of information and personnel among the colleges to know activities and achievements of each other, to promote joint research projects, or to organize workshops, orientation courses, and collaborative schemes to upgrade knowledge and com competencies of our professional colleagues. There should be signing of functioning MOUs between the colleges for conducting these activities. Number two, there is little awareness among our faculties and students about having a strong professional body in the country. We have no competent, uh, com uh, we have to contemplate on this issue and educate our students and faculty the importance of having 
such an organization at state and national level for building strength of our profession. There are a few organizations, but again, they function in isolation. Understanding and appreciating functions of each other, coming on one platform for solving common issues of the profession and representing idea, uh, re representing India at the international professional meetings should become possible uh, with uh, the understanding that we develop uh, among ourselves. The next one is the quality of research in the profession is to be upgraded. It is observed that the topics are repeated, data is mal utilized and plagiarism is on the rise. It should be checked further. A national education policy 2021 is serving as a lighthouse for all educationists in India. We should have, we should deprive, we should derive optimum for physical education from the policy, particularly for secondary education. Because in secondary education only, we get longer period uh, for our physical education teachers to, uh, to mold the personalities of the students. In view of the increasing un unemployment problem in the teaching field, it would be appropriate to introduce short-term programs in sports industry, sports management, sports physiotherapy, yoga instructor, a course, sports media and allied fields by the autonomous colleges uh, and the subject universities and also by others with the permission of parent universities. There should be a strong lobby of our professional leaders in the apex bodies like NCT, AIU, UGC, NCRT, and NAC to safeguard the future of our profession. Joint efforts are required to be made in this direction. While concluding few words of appreciation and professional observations, I once again express my thanks for inviting me and the available for my sentiments towards this great vision. Jain. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir. And uh, indeed, uh, we are truly passionate about the words that you have spoken. And uh, it was very, very relevant to us. It was an eye opener that we have to work more on collaborating schemes, MOUs with the colleges, and the quality of research to be upgraded. And uh, we should represent in India at the international conferences, at the international platforms. And we should also get into the national education policy of uh, that derives more to the physical education and the strong lobby have to be placed for the physical educationists at the NAC and NCT and other forums. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful address. And it is truly appreciated. And on and uh, as a token of love and appreciation from the YMC College, we would like to honor you with an appreciation certificate. Kindly accept it, sir. Thank you very much. I humbly accept it. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Uh, now uh, we will, we are going to have a wonderful person who is going to talk to us in another few minutes. She is none other than Professor Lucy Vergis. She was born on 8-9-1934. She was graduated from University College Trivandrum. And it is, it is really a lovely moment to say that she has fetched her DP ed from YMC College Madras. And she entered college at service at the age of 20 at Fatima Mata College, Kollam in 1955. And she was working at the Government Women's College from 1957 to 1964. She got married to a rubber technologist and industrialist, Sri Vergis Joseph. He is a founder of Hawaka brand of footwear. She was living abroad at UK and Singapore and returned to India in 1971. She is settled at Kolikod in 1972 and rejoined service. The last 10 years was at Physical Education College, Calicut. She was the principal of this college for her last five years till retirement. She retired from service in the year 1990. 
She was a member of the Calicut University Syndicate and Senate in the year 1999 and 2001. She was also the president of the Kerala State Women's Hockey Association for eight years from 1992 to 2000. She was also the organizing secretary for the National Women's Hockey Championship held at Calicut in 1984. A hockey player, she has represented the state twice. The second time as a captain at Delhi and got selected to the national coaching camp. And she was the first women athlete from Kerala to win second place in long jump at the National Olympics held at Jalanda in 1953. And uh, she is also a leader for Polymer Industries, a rubber footwear manufacturing firm. She has traveled extensively to many parts of the world. She has got two sons, Dr. Joe Vergis, a neurologist, settled in New York, USA, and Mr. Paul Vergis is an MBA industrialist. She is interested in reading, writing, traveling, and music. Amazing are your achievements, dear ma'am. We are looking forward uh, to listen to you, and uh, whatever the experiences, the expertise that you have are truly exceptional work and that exceeds our imagination. We are thrilled to have you in our midst and your experience, expertise, honestly, it's above and beyond. We are ready to listen to you. Please, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Glory. Darling, may I call you Darling Glory? <laughs> sounds, that sounds much better now. You have said uh, so many nice things about you. Perhaps it's a bit uh, of uh, exaggeration. Anyway, I'm into so many things. I'm still at the age of 86 now. I still uh, like to read and I write. I spent a lot of time uh, um, playing scrabbles. My son, who is a neurologist, he used to say, if, uh, if, if the mind is uh, occupied all the time, you won't uh, get dementia or Alzheimer's diseases. So perhaps it's because of that, I can uh, remember so many things uh, very clearly, even at this age. So it might be due to all these activities I'm having. And uh, recently I have started writing also. I translated one of my mom's book, uh, Reminiscences of My Father into English. So like that, writing is in our family, so it comes easy to me. So let me get into the subject. I'm really, really honored to be in the midst of so many luminaries from all over India who have put in their share for the development of physical education in universities, colleges, schools, and states. Mr. Jacob and myself, we classmates and are good friends at uh, YMCA College, Madras. I came there as a raw graduate from University College, Chandra. The YMCA College has contributed a lot for my personality development and skills. The years I spent there was one of the most enjoyable and memorable period of my life. Apart from grooming me as a teacher, I was able to improve my skills in my favorite event, long jump and sprints when I studied there. After uh, passing out from YMCA College, I have worked in three, four colleges in my state and have been fortunate 
and instrumental in organizing various levels of tournaments in, in our state. While working at Physical Education College, Calicut, I'm gratified to be instrumental in grooming really good, good physical education teachers, especially the first uh, three of the batches. I still remember. I have always enjoyed my work. I have had the full support of my family. My husband, even though he has nothing to do with sports, he never said no to any of my activities. Or he never said no to my working in a college. So that's how I was able to develop many things. My sons also supported me. I take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. George Abraham and the staff of YMCA who made this mega event a reality. Hats off to you, sir. I'm happy to see so many stalwarts in the field of physical education. This is, this is a very big opportunity for me. And, and, thank, and I'm very thankful to Dr. Jo for uh, giving me a chance to address this meeting. To, together, we can do wonders in the field of physical education. Together, we can uh, do wonders in the field of sports and games. Tokyo Olympics is only a start. We can join hands and work for a bright future for the development of sports and games in our country. Jai Hind. Thank you, madam. It's my pleasure to uh, present the e-certificate on behalf of OMC College of Physical Education. Thank you for sharing your experience, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the next guest of honor, Dr. L.K. Singh. Sir is having 30 years of teaching experience in physical education and sports. He had organized so many competitions in college level, university, state, and national level. He was a member of Manipur University Sports, for, Sports Board for a long period of time. He was a member of Academic Council and chairman of Syllabus Committee of Manipur Martial Arts. Many times I was appointed as an expert, subject expert for the physical education, for physical education in MPSC, that is Manipur Public Service Commission, Impal. Sir had worked as a coordinator for the, in the field of physical education and traditional Manipur Martial Art in EMMRC, Impal. Sir had completed MPAD in HVPM's degree college from Nagpur University. He was awarded PhD from Manipur University. He worked as a principal in AIPE in Gauhati. He had written many books for the government. That it means his book in health and physical education had are the textbook in uh, Manipur government from class one to eight. He had contributed much of his experience in articles, and he was a reader in MP College and DM College of Science. So he retired as an associate professor in 2007. He was a senior fellowship holder of the year 2011 to 12, founded by Ministry of Art and Culture from Government of India. Sir, it's a pleasure to hear your voice. Thank you for your presence, sir. Sir, please. Yes, respected Professor Deepak Kumar Dube, former Vice Chancellor LNISPE, Gwalior, Professor E. Jacob, former Director of Physical Education, University of Calicut, Kerala. 
Dr. Suresh I Despande, Director, Hanuman Bhayam Prasar Mandal, Amravati, Maharashtra. Professor De Lucy Bergi, former principal, Government Physical Education College, Dalikat, Kerala. Eminent resource persons and the participants, a very good morning to one and all present here. I'm indeed very grateful to the organizing committee to invite me to be the case of honor of today's conference. As we all know that an anthropometry is the comprehensive study, knowledge of measuring the effect on the shape, body proportion, composition, maturity, capacity, and physical performance for the application of human movement. So it is a very well-known fact that nutrition plays a very important role in development. In fact, development that plays since the baby is in the fetal stage, the food that the mother takes will bring about the healthy development of summer during this period. We must take the advantage of the adequate knowledge of anthropometry. Again, we should remember the function and the role of anthropometry in the field of games and sports in particular, because anthropometry play a very important role in performance. Most of the functions are number one, goals because a determinant of sports that can minimize the achievement of its athlete. Number two, volume mm per kg per minute in the fitness status of athlete. Then number three, metabolic equivalent measurement MT, MNT. Last point, made assessment of fat composition bone, water content, and muscle mass. As such, this term may be defined as a discipline that studies dynamic relationship between human structure and function, and give it a quantitative interface. This topic is very close to movement education. As a person in physical education and the coach, it is very much necessary to know where to move, when to move, how to move, and why to move effectively. In the meantime, sports science is in so to earn maximum gain from minimum facilities. So each individual is required to have a clear idea of sports medicine nutrition and balanced diet, body mass index, muscle types, etc. So as to enable to ensure the above mentioned questions appropriately. Here, I would like to refer to one statement. In 1976 Olympic Games, the East German won 90 medals, out of which 40 were gold medals. And uh, the main reason behind their victory is the way sports medicine information or knowledge is negative to the athletes and coaches. All coaches are required to take the sports medicine courses and to be certified by the competent authority. Thus, the sports person should have appropriate background knowledge of physical education and sports science. Also, not only the sports persons, but all the individuals in general should have an adequate knowledge of what type and structure. This will help sports persons to move more skillfully and effectively. Else, the role of physical educators and the courses, as well as sports medicine practitioners, are equally very important. Before I conclude, I would like to thank the organizing committee of this international conference and Dr. 
those Abraham Principal YMCA College of Physical Education for your true spirit and dedication towards our profession. Also, I would like to pay my special gratitude to Dr. Suresh H. Des Pande, Director Anuman Bayam Prasarak Mandal Amravati Maharashtra. I wish this conference a grand success. Thank you all. Please, please, ma'am, please unmute. Uh, okay, sir. Good morning to all. I am Dr. Jamil, Assistant Professor of YMCA. It is an honor to have a personality like you as our guest of honor for today's occasion. As a token of love and appreciation of our management, would like to honor you with this certificate. Kindly accept it, sir, please. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now it's the time to introduce our principal, Dr. John Abraham. Sir has good academic excellence. He has studied MA Economics, MA Population Studies, MPA, MSW, MSC Yoga, Master of Physical Education and Sports, MPhil in Physical Education. He was awarded a double PhD degree in different subjects, PhD in physical education and PhD in business administration. Apart from this, Sarah has six diploma degrees, that is PhD diploma in yoga, PhD diploma in fitness management, PhD diploma in hospital management, PhD diploma in human rights, PhD diploma in public administration and advanced diploma in acupuncture. He is the editorial board member of national and international journals also, he has contributed many articles in national and international journals. Besides, Sar has published five books. He had been appointed times, uh, many times as chief supervisor for many exams. Sar is having more than two decades of research experience. Nearly 24 young field scholars and 10 PhD scholars benefited by his guidance. Being a sportsman himself, he has won four gold medals in World Most Games, which held at Australia in the year of 2015. Sarah has got more than 19 years of teaching experience since 2017. He is our principal. Dr. George Abraham has tremendous contribution in the field of physical education and sports. He has got great influence due to his very bold and brave man with great ideology and vision. We all are delighted to have such an eligible person with such a good experience to monitor our college. Under your guidance and leadership, may we reach the next levels of glory. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Demil. Good morning. Welcome all the dignitaries and uh, delegates to this international virtual conference. Today's chief guest, former Vice Chancellor of LNIP, Honorable Professor Dilir Kumar Durai, a guest of honors, Professor E.J. Jacob, former Director of Physical Education, University of Calicut, Dr. Suresh Deshpandesab, Director. HVP Mantral Amiravadi, uh, Professor Lucy Vagis, Alumni of YMC College and former Principal of Government Physical Education College, Calicut, Dr. L. K. Zing, former Principal, Abhirachi Institute of Physical Education, uh, Guwahati, and well known person in uh, Manipur, He's a Master of Physical Education in Manipur, uh, College Correspondent and Secretary. Mr. Benjamin Franklin, College Administrator, Mr. Rajiv George, Inviter Speakers, Professor Juan, Abdul Man, uh, Professor Alma Atta University, Indonesia, uh, Dr. Fehman, Kunukman, uh, Professor Department of Physical Education, uh, Qatar University, Doga Qatar, uh, Dr. Anup Adhikari, 
access physiologist from Canada, uh, Dr. Lee Kuan Meg, Associate Professor, University Putra, Malaysia. Other purposes and uh, physical education directors from various colleges and universities. Uh, research scholars, uh, non-teaching and non-teaching staff of IMC College, organizing secretaries of this international conference, uh, assistant professors, Dr. G. Bobby and Dr. S. Uh, Sadish Kumar, and other organizing committee members and students very good morning to everyone i feel uh, uh, so proud and honored being the principal of uh, this pioneer institution just before uh Hodrible, former vice chancellor of lnip uh dr dilip duray inaugurator of this conference uh who is and everybody knows who is an outstanding academician and administrator and uh, dynamic person in the field of physical education in India. I could remember uh, once I presented a paper at Aligarh Muslim University from my knowledge in 2011 or 12. Uh, Dilip Sir was the uh, chairman of selection committee for selecting a good paper, in, um, uh, the best paper. And uh, he has been selected, uh, me as the best paper as an awardee in 2011 when i presented a paper in international conference at aligan muslim university so uh is a very good we have very good relation relationship since 2009 when i used to present paper at uh, benares in the university uh when he was a uh, professional head of benares in the university sir we are honored with your valuable presence and grace to this international conference I consider it is a great privilege to welcome you all to this great institution as well as to this international virtual conference on a modern approach of kinetometry, nutrition and growth and development, making 2021 as a part of uh, our college centenary celebrations. We all know an outstanding physical educationist and the visionary, uh, Dr. Mr. Harry Crowbuck, established his college in 1920. Uh, later, who is named as the father of physical education of India. We have produced, this college has produced uh, more than a lot of physical educationists and who are the ambassadors of this college and the pillars of physical education of India. We have successfully completed eight international conferences this academic year, this year. Uh, those were very useful and informative for the professional physical education uh, and the society. This is our ninth uh, international conference. Uh, um, we have, fortunately, we have four outstanding uh, resources, I mean, uh, guest of owners with us. Uh, Professor E.J. E. 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 Jacob, we heard about him. He studied here in 1953 and uh, he visited many countries. He studied uh, from abroad also. Very outstanding person uh, from Kerala and uh, who was the uh, director of physical education of Calicut University more than two decades. And uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Desh Pandey, uh, Dilip sir, told him, uh, told about him very clearly. We can say Desh Pandey sir is the father of physical education of Maharashtra, not only Maharashtra, Central or North India. It's a very outstanding person. So thank you, sir, for your great uh, presence uh, and your speech. And uh, Professor Lucy Valdez, who was studied here in 1953, one of the senior most students of uh, YMC College, and uh, who was a uh, principal of uh, physical education um, in German Physical Education College at Calicut. Thank you, ma'am, for your valuable presence and grace. And uh, Dr. L.K. Singh, I heard about Dr. L.K. Singh. We can say who is the master of physical education from Manipur, who taught more than three decades. Uh, uh, those who are from physical education all have studied under L.K. Singh. 
It's a very outstanding and eminent person from physical education. Thank you, sir, for your great uh, uh, presence and your speech. And uh, fortunately, we have four outstanding resource persons uh, who are, uh, are also with us from uh, Indonesia, um, Qatar, Canada, and Malaysia. I hope uh, this conference would be very informative and useful uh, to all the physical education professionals. I hope all the sessions would be fruitful and informative. Uh, I am taking this opportunity to appreciate the organizing secretaries, the assistant professors of YMC College, Dr. G. Bobby and Dr. S. Satish Kumar, uh, for their tireless work and uh, effort to make this program uh, in action. Uh, before concluding, once again, I welcome all the dignitaries and delegates to this international virtual conference. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for the, your special address. Uh, now, time to invite uh, the first resource person of this uh, conference. I'm very much privileged and honored to invite uh, Dr. Juan Abdul Manan, Juan Muda. I hope uh, I pronounce his name properly. If not, please excuse me. Uh, Dr. Juan Manan is now as a professor of nutrition of public health at the Graduate School of Public Health. Alma Atta University, Rogi Agartha, Indonesia. He was a professor of nutrition and public health, University of Science, Malaysia, where he served for 34 years until his retirement in January 2017. He then became a visiting professor at uh, Kyoto University, Japan, and later a visiting uh, senior fellow, uh, Kasana Research Institute, Kuala Lumpur. He is currently the chairperson of Hack Depot, Makanan, Malaysia, and an executive committee of the World Public Health Nutrition Association. His areas of interest are obesity, undernutrition, food security, anthropometry, social determinate, determinants of health and nutrition, physical activity, and nutrition activism. Uh, he has completed his BA in nutrition St. Paul, McAllister College, Minnesota, USA, and a completed his MSc in clinical nutrition from Russian University, Chicago, MED in nutrition education and community nutrition, Columbia University, New York City, USA. And uh, I take this, I take privilege, invite him, such an appropriate person, to talk on this topic in this beautiful conference. Sir, please, the time is yours now. Professor Juan Abdul Man, please take Yeah, on. okay. Uh, thank you. Let me try to share my screen with you. Uh, please, please, you can share your screen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can see my screen, huh? Okay, good morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. You can hear me, right? Yes, sir, please. Uh, yes. All right, okay. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to this important conference. Um, thank you, Dr. George Abraham and Dr. Satish Kumar for making this possible and the team at the YMCA College of Physical Education. And uh, the topic of my presentation is, is here today. Uh, uh, recent advances of selected research on obesity, anthropometry, and physical activity in relation to nutrition transition, a bit of uh, the Malaysian experience. Uh, what I will present today is a mix of um, reviews and uh, a bit of some sample of some research that I did um, 
a few years back, about five years back. And uh, so it will be a sort of uh, a, a mix. And um, what we did is not something uh, unique because there are, there are many other people in Malaysia and other parts of the world who are doing similar type of research. So let me see here. Uh, the, the outline of this presentation will be first uh, introduction to like health uh, and nutrition transition, the states of NCDs in Malaysia. Then I will show some uh, small studies on uh, somatotypes and the second one on the study we did on physical activity. It is a large study, but I will show you one part of it only. And if I have time, I will show some photos of Malaysian food which causes Malaysia to be you know, so obese in Southeast Asia and one of the obese uh, country in Asia. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, Malaysia is a multicultural uh, country and uh, is located in, in uh, Southeast Asia. And it's currently about 70% urban and 23% uh, rural. Uh, okay, why is food important? Huh? In early modern times, the general population normally spend about half to three fourths of your income on food. So now when harvest fail, for example, uh, price of food will rise and uh, people will suffer and this cause of death. So does population adjusted to insufficient food by having smaller body size and then you can conserve your energy and increase your, but there is increased mortality of course. This is further elaborated by uh, Robert Pogel in his book, you know, Escape from Hunger. So what, what we have is what we call the next nutrition and survival in adults, which results in what we call it height. Huh? summarize the net nutrition in childhood. So height of a person has a long historical background. Whereas weight for height summarize our recent adequacy of dietary energy. So when you are talking about weight and height, it is important to, to see one is like, if you have, it's more chronic, like a problem of nutrition that lead to uh, stunted growth and all this uh, stunting and so on. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go quickly to this four uh, transition uh, survivor because uh, I think this is important for us who live in like developing country to see why we are different in as Western countries in terms of disease because we there, there are actually four uh, stages uh, pre agrarian, poor agrarian, early modern, and late modern. What happened is with our Survival pattern is that we jump from poor agrarian straight to what we call late modern uh, industrial society. Uh, this one from here, so we miss this early modern thing, which most European countries uh, go through this uh, process. But of course, the, uh, we we don't blame it because it's, it's due to globalization and other things that lead us to here. That's where we are having what we call the nutrition transition. And then uh, in nutrition transition, we have a problem of um, having, for example, double burden or triple burden of disease. Uh, you have undernutrition, you have diet related disease, also, and then you also have like uh, micronutrient deficiency and many other things at, at the same time. But in the West, mostly you have diet related disease, huh? very few under, under nutrition, except if you have uh, calamities and all those things, huh? or hospital uh, malnutrition among the, among the elderly. Uh, so this is, this is how it happened. When uh, non communicable disease are on the rise, it's this under this transition, and then whereas uh, infection are uh, going down. Uh, but we have to remember, except for what we what is happening now, the COVID nineteen is an infectious disease, so it is an exception to the rule. No? 
because uh, there are uh, so many deaths and uh, hundreds of millions of people are infected by now. So I'm uh, showing you what this is the global burden of disease. The global burden of disease is a new uh, consortium that is at the University of Washington uh, in Seattle there that was built up in around 1992 or 1993 like that. It's a systematic scientific effort to quantify comparative data. This is the biggest data in the world now that everyone is referring to. So if you go to the internet, you see world in data. Uh, it is where even uh, the COVID thing is uh, update is also here. So this is the uh, one of the graph that I took from the, the letters. Huh? Of course, 2017 means they, they have analyzed it up to 2017. The burden of disease by cost. So here, you cardiovascular disease occupy about 366 million people are suffering right now, followed by cancers, huh? 233 million. And uh, of course, the red one is infectious disease, huh? neonatal disorders and all. So, and the blue one is NCD and the red one is uh, infection, huh? mostly related to infection. Huh? And, uh, and then this is the next one. Uh, this is by percentage, huh? you have about 40, 14.6% uh, in the world are now CVD currently, and uh, followed by about 9.4% uh, cancer. Uh, I will touch a bit about NCD in Malaysia. Um, yeah, this is a prevalence of selected NCD risk factors for adults in Malaysia between 2006 to 2015. Uh, we do, except for cancer here. But we, we have here to see the increase over a period of almost 10 years, uh, like uh, all, it's, it's all increased except uh, yeah, alcohol. Huh? But yeah, alcohol is not NCD, but it is part of the uh, risk factors. Huh? And then this is a prevalence of, uh, Selected NCD risk factors for ASEAN uh, countries in Asia in ASEAN. Uh, Malaysia has very high obesity rate, and uh, because currently obesity in Malaysia is about almost fifty percent. Uh, I mean obesity and overweight almost fifty percent, and then cholesterol here, and. The highest is uh, physical inactivity is the most physically inactive population in ASEAN and perhaps uh, in the world also. And uh, this, this data is a bit small. Um, these are just uh, showing the difference between the leading causes of death in uh, Malaysia between 1990 and 2017. Uh, in 1990, CVD and uh, problem of like maternal and neonatal disorders are still number one and two, but in 2017, it's all NCD at the top two there. Um, uh, you have NCD and cancer there. And uh, this is another uh, um, data that show the difference between the GBD, uh, global um, burden of disease and the Malaysia burden of disease. Uh, they, they are not much difference except for the world is still because you have still many underdeveloped countries so lower respiratory infection is still number two. But here in Malaysia is road traffic injuries is the number two in 2014. Uh, and also prevalence of overweight. This is a data on prevalence of overweight based on the income groupings. And uh, you see, uh, the, 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 this one is uh, the lowest, the bottom, the bottom group income. So if we divide income into five groupings, you know, this is the top. So you still have overweight, uh, still high among the, but it's almost the same every, but abdominal obesity is highest among the lowest income group. I don't know about 
other countries. No? It, it may be uh, advisable to, to study abdominal obesity rather uh, together with total obesity. Yeah? And uh, this is uh, the problem in uh, Malaysia. Percentage of adults who consume adequate fruits and vegetables are very low, very, very low. For example, here, uh, hardly 10% of people, except for those are top, uh, the rich people only, but for, uh, uh, or this one, uh, the, the dark blue are rich people, but the, the poor one, uh, the rest of the people can't afford to buy fruits. Particularly now, during the COVID, uh, fruits and uh, vegetables are really expensive all over the world. And uh, this is this summarizes the burden of NCD in uh, Malaysia. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, for cardiovascular diabetes and uh, cancer here, I, I'll just uh, move to, okay, yeah, the Malaysian Ministry of Health also have what they call it National Strategic Plan for Non-Communicable Disease. Uh, the, previously, it was between 2010 to 2015 and now 2016 to 2025. Uh, uh, these are what? Uh, plan and uh, policies and plan that they, they have done in the country. Okay, now I will present about, about two sample studies of what we did, uh, one on anthropometry and the other on physical activity. So the first one here is the relationship between uh, somatotypes uh, towards uh, CVD risk factors among government employees in a state of uh, in in a city of Kuala Terengganu in the state of Terengganu. Um, okay. Yeah, somata, as we know, under anthropometry, somatotype is a technique used to describe human physics. Endomorphy, endomorphy, mesomorphy, and ectomorphy. And uh, it is often expressed in three number rating. Huh? Uh, for example, three, six, four. Huh? Uh, this show the the relative fatness, relative musculoskeletal robustness, and relative linearity or slenderness. Um, so our research objective here is to evaluate the relationship between uh, somatotype component to the risk factors of CVD. Uh, these are measurement of cholesterol, LDL, HDL, and, uh, and uh, glucose uh, among the so uh, we are using the 10 uh, indicators of uh, oh, these are the indicators, the height, weight, triceps, subscapular, skin pole, supraspinale, media scalp, humerus bone breast, femur bone, upper arm girth, and calf girth. So these are the equations I'm not going through because this, this is available in the uh, Carter and Heath books and uh, also in the Kin Anthropometrica. So these are the characteristics of respondent. It's about 38 years old and uh, males and females. Huh? And uh, let's see. Yeah. It range from 25 to 57. And BMI um, total is a little bit above 25. So it's almost normal. But of course, uh, mind you, Malaysia is using the WHO, which is uh, 25 and above is overweight uh, for BMI because, but some other countries in Southeast Asia are using the other one, using 23 and uh, 
and we're above 23 is uh, of BMI is already overweight. So we always have to check when we uh, read the I mean, journal articles. Sometimes you were wondering why Indonesia is so high um, obesity, but then they are using 22 BMI instead of 25, uh, the difference for overweight. And uh, these are the, what we call it, the reading for the endomorphy, mesomorphy. So male respondent here belong to mesomorph, endomorph, body, somatotype category, whereas female respondent belong to mesomorphic, endomorph, somatotype category also. Yeah. Um, we find that uh, female have greater endomorph component, slightly higher uh, mesomorph component and lower ectomorph component compared to the male correspondent. So they are less linear and less um, uh, and in muscular. And this is supported by some other studies. So Somatotype differ uh, between genders because of several factors. For example, different in body composition among male and female. Uh, because female sometimes have higher body fat than males. Um, so uh, this study shows that. And uh, endomorphy and uh, mesomorphy score of respondent increase with BMI category. And ectomorphy would have score decreased with BMI category as shown here. So what we are saying here that it, it's indicating that they have higher relative fatness, subcutaneous fat, roundness of trunk and limb and increased storage of fat in abdomen. So, in general, this finding suggested that uh, in spite of using BMI, somatotype somato measurement should also be conducted because if we want to get a more accurate or precise result. Because I, the findings show here, endomorphic component is high, although the respondent were categorized as having normal BMI. And endomorphy keeps on rising as the BMI of respondent uh, increases. So, this person for the National Sports Day uh -huh. in their institutions. So, using BMI alone, and really you know, guys, the management cannot distinguish the hidden fat in the body. This may lead to serious health problem. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, the overall one, no? uh, eighty four percent endomorph, uh, eleven point seven percent mesomorph, and uh, uh, dominant here. We are talking about the dominant uh, somatotype and three percent um, ectomorph. This uh, in the adults normally this is, but uh, the percentage might might differ. Um, okay. So this is uh, the data on the dominant body somatotype category versus the BMI categories of among respondents. So you can see that here that, for example, the 30.4% mesomorph respondent were categorized into overweight and obese BMI category if you are using, but they basically is muscular. Huh? It is not the fat because you know the mesomorph one are muscular people. But if you use BMI, of course, the BMI will uh, read it wrongly because it's, it's just based on weight and height. Uh, it, you, you don't go a bit deeper. And this is a repeat, repeat profile. I think I'm uh, moving faster here. It's, it's just that there's, I will read you the... There is some here. In conclusion, for this study, male respondent were categorized as uh, more mesomorph endomorph, while uh, female mesomorphic endomorph. So, 
using uh, the BMI cutoff point, uh, 34 30 of mesomorph respondents were wrongly categorized into overweight and obese. And uh, respondents have elevated risk for CVD. And all the indicators, uh, blood indicators here show significant correlations uh, with each somatotype, somatotype components. And it can be concluded finally that there were relationship between lipid profiles with somatotypes among respondents. Uh, yeah, I'm jumping to the next one here because I'm, I'm showing this too. Um, this is uh, a study uh, entitled uh, Recent Advances in Physical Activity Research in Relation to Built Environment, Obesity, Breast Cancer and Pregnancy. Uh, this is a big study that we conducted in 2015. And uh, there are four studies here, but I'm going to touch only on this physical activity with status and uh, uh, environmental variability. And uh, this is the, the main study because we received a large funding for this study. And uh, this is the, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, we started applying in 2011 and uh, we're supposed to finish by 2016, uh, 15, but we end, we end up into 2016. Uh, this is a name, the, this is a study title. These are the people involved. And uh, we are using um, GIS map for this one. So this is a map trying to identify walkability areas in the city of Kota Baru, one of the city that we are studying in this. Uh, so these are some, we are showing, you know, walk, walkable area or uh, obstruction uh, along the road sometimes. It's very common in a developing country, people are, are obstructing places where people can walk. And uh, we are using the actigraph, uh, the accelerometer. This is real-time uh, measurement. And uh, we were part of the international collaborative study of 13 countries headed by here, uh, here Prof. Jim Salis of the University of California, San Diego, and also his assistant here, Dr. Mark Adam from Arizona State University. So uh, as introduction, the Malaysian Adult Nutrition Survey 2014 reported that 36.9% of Malaysian adults uh, were physically inactive. Uh, so Malaysian living in urban areas were more physically inactive as compared to the rural counterpart. And uh, the importance of physical activity and environment uh, a physical and built environment uh, towards physical activity is um, cannot be denied. But a lot, I mean, for people who are like you all are working in sports and all this, you have already ready-made environment, like you know, the part and the the field, the the gym. But for the public, it's very difficult, particularly in the lower income area and poorer areas, to find places. You know, and uh, here. For example, public transportation, uh, physical activity to work, and so on, are uh, a bit seldom reported in from the Asian countries. So, I mean, the study within Malaysia hopefully will, will provide some information and uh, to help understand uh, why physical activity in most countries are not regularly accepted or maybe what are the hindrances. Huh? So, um, the what we are trying is to measure the average daily and moderate vigorous, moderate to vigorous physical activity to uh, achieve in Malaysia in two cities of Penang and Kota Baru. So I'm going to be a bit faster. This, these are just the uh, methods. Huh? Uh, so these are the, how do we use data? We use GIS, we use questionnaire. Uh, we use iPad long version and we use separated QOL and we use anthropometric measurement and accelerometry. This is the difference that we use as compared to other studies. 
because you will see a lot, a lot, a large difference between self-reported IPAC or questionnaire as opposed to measuring people for seven days in a, in a row with non-stop and also we use uh, assessment of food intake. Huh? Uh, okay, this, uh, to round it up here, the results show that low workability is about 60% and high workability among all these people, among, among all the respondents here. And here, uh, we have uh, more than 55% obese and overweight. So the normal and underweight are only a small amount. Huh? I mean, less than half in the country. I just keep the BMI here. And here, this is an important part here. The total moderate to vigorous physical activity per day in Malaysia, I mean, based on this, our study, is only 13.5 minutes per day. But if you look at the question and study, they will say about 30 minutes or, or more. This is, I mean, so, and uh, furthermore, you, you, it will shock you that uh, in the city of Kota Baru, uh, it's only 8.8 .8 minutes per day. We, uh, <laughs> more day to be rigorous physical activity. And uh, again here, we see the percentage of uh, whether you achieve 30 minutes uh, moderate to vigorous physical activity per day or not. So we have about 88.2% who didn't achieve. Uh, who, I mean, only 11% uh, achieve 30 minutes per day among the respondents. Uh. And for 20 minutes per day, only about 23% achieve 20 minutes per day moderate to vigorous physical activity. Because only moderate to vigorous activity make any difference if you want to lose weight, if you want to, to have active lifestyle or what. Nah? We are not talking about light physical activity here. And uh, if we compare this to the rest of the world, uh, because we compare with other studies uh, where, that we did, nah? and <laughs> Kota Baru is 8.8 .8 minutes per day, whereas in other countries, for example, like in Czechoslovakia, they spend 47 minutes per day on average. And in, in Belgium, 35.5 uh, minutes. And in Brazil, in Bogota. So I, I don't have it. It's good that if we get the real data, I mean, with, uh, in other ASEAN countries. So far, we, we don't have. But uh, we are collecting now data in Hong Kong. Uh, there are some studies in India also being carried out in the group and uh, in Bangladesh also. And uh, so the results show here that we, when to access physical activity, you have to access what is, is very linked to what we call it land use mix, you know, what, what is the area look like. And also residential density and traffic safety were reported to be negatively associated with BMI of participants after adjusting for covariates. So this study showed that infrastructure and safety for walking and cycling was negatively correlated with physical activity. So in conclusion, uh, the, we can say that the infrastructure and safety for walking, for example, in Kota Baru and, and, and cycling in Kota Baru and Penang are not conducive and uh, safe, not safe enough uh, for carry out, out physical activity. And uh, even the individuals who are more physically active have rated this variable very low. Uh, even I'm very enthusiastic about, you know, doing exercise, walking, but there are a lot of obstacles on the road. And, um, and finally, also participants in this study have considerable low, moderate to vigorous physical activity uh, in terms of minutes per day compared to data from other countries and recommendations. Uh, enough to garner attention to the fact that Malaysian adults are not physically active uh, adequately to achieve uh, health benefits. And uh, the recommendation here is that uh, infrastructure and safety for work. Uh, um, okay, environmental attributes such as availability of safe, wide and usable walking and biking pathway, 
pedestrian priority, safety and adequate public transport system as well as environment and counter rapidly growing physical inactivity uh, have to be implemented or promoted or campaign should be done. And uh, use of public transit should also be encouraged as it increases physical activity. Um, so let me see. I'm, I'm done with the time, right? Oh, I show you a few slides of uh, 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 food in Malaysia here. Uh, yeah, I'll show some. These are the food in Malaysia that people eat. <laughs> that very high in calories, some of them. Uh, and this, I mean, these are more than food. Uh, these are what? Uh, these are the fried rice and fried kway teow. And this is also something like mandi rice or biryani. And this is a Malaysian favorite, the nasi lemak. Everyone who comes to Malaysia will have to eat uh, nasi lemak. And this is uh, common to our place here in Kota Baru, nasi kerabu. And these are satay, you know, this, this is a, a Malaysian uh, brand, uh, satay. And this is chicken rice, all this food. And these are some of the dessert. Okay, thank you. I think I'm, I'm done here. Thank you for the, your attention. Thank you very much, sir. Professor Juan Abdul Manan Juan Munda. Uh, here, uh, you have presented very well manner that is about the national strategy plan for uh, tobacco and non-communicable diseases and endomeso, endomeso and ectomavic. And uh, somatic type, just you have elaborately you have been researched and you have presented in a well manner. Thank you, sir. And here is a question session open to the forum. One Mr. Praveen Kumar he asked the question, what is a physical activity? I think what is a physical activity have to be adapted. Instead of that, he blindly asked, I think what is physical activity? Uh, okay. What, what is physical activity? You mean the definition? <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I think physical, what kind I mean, of physical activities can be recommended? I think, I think, uh, uh, what kind of physical activity can be adopted? Ah, uh, yeah, maybe that point. There, there are actually, um, the uh, we have to talk about physical activity. In um, there are few domain of physical activity, uh, but wh what I'm talking about physical activity here is a planned physical activity. I mean, you spend time for your own physical activity. There, of course, there, there are physical activity in the transport domain where you're going to work, for example, you either cycle, walk, or take public transport. And there is physical activity in housework uh, where, you know, you do housework uh, like uh, gardening or what. And then there is physical activity in your daily work. If you are a manual labor or what, then that is already your work is part of your physical activity. But the, the physical activity, sometimes we are talking uh, as a major physical activity is, I mean, we are not discarding all those physical activity. But physical activity that we encourage people to do a, a full physical activity, not just your hand is using or your leg is, uh, is I mean, it's the whole body. It's more like aerobic type of physical activity. But uh, when we measure this physical activity, we, we consider all other physical activity also. Because when we ask a person to wear the accelerometer, the accelerometer will detect when you have physical activity. And uh, so it, 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 it doesn't uh, accept when you, even if you go to sleep also, they, they will detect that you are sleeping. You know? And now there are so many types of accelerometer, the one that you can patch on your skin also, that, that is one. So, uh, it is different from like, uh, you know, plan exercise, I mean, exercise that are, or sports, huh, which are competitive. So these are just day-to-day -day things that uh, you identify yourself, you want to do it. Um, I, it's, it's better to have that kind, at least spend like 10 or 15 minutes of your physical activity. That is the, what the WHO recommended, apart from your, your doing, you know, carrying out your load every day. Yes, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you for your valuable uh, answer for the question. And here, uh, we have we would like to honor behalf of the IMC College of Physical Education, Correspondent Secretary Principal, we would like to honor you with our e-certificate. Sir, please accept it, sir.
Uh, okay, I accept. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, excellent certificate. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, one minute. Andrew, sir, one minute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I would like to say one word about uh, Professor Wan. He is one of the senior most professor from Malaysia. I had a uh, chance to meet him uh, in 2012 when I visited U USM, University of Science Malaysia. He was a chief of USM at that time. I could remember. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Wan, for your wonderful speech. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. He is the one of the senior most, I mean, very excellent, an eminent person from the physical field of physical education from Malaysia. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Just we like to move to the sec. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Okay. Just we like to move to the second research person. We have a great personality, Doctor Fernand Konokman, Assistant Professor, Department of Physical Education at Qatar University. It is in Doha, Qatar. He did his PhD in Virginia Polytechnic Institute. Polytechnic Institute and State University, and he did his same. He did his MAD. Then after that, he did his UG Middle East Technical University at Ankara. He was the faculty member of Ellensburg University at New York. He was a editorial review board of IC HPR SD Journal of Physical Education. And many more journals acted as a editor, not only in physical education as well as in the mainly for autism students and children's developments, and Jopard plus plus one in behavioral social studies journals. He has presented and uh, he acted as an editor. He published both English and Tamil journal Jopard E T D D strategies R Q I S plus. And he has published forty publications in scholarly journals, and more than that, he is a peer review member, present member in for uh, journals abstract. And apart from that, one thirty national international journals he has presented in USA, Qatar, Bahrain, Turkey, Brazil, Italy, Poland, Northern Macedonia. Monaco, Greece, Iran, Japan, India, Switzerland. He deal with uh, autism students through physical education, and he has been awarded more uh, eminent personality awards and very good uh, worker. And more than that, he has uh, he inducted Kappa Delta PhE. In the International Society in Physical Education, he got he is a very good award. That is very most important award in Virginia. That university has Department of Physical Education and Students Affairs Department has given him as a advisor of this year in 2016. Sir, really very very great honor to be here to present your uh, resource papers here, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Sir, please. Uh, good morning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, greetings from Qatar. First of all, I would like to thank to Dr. George Abraham for this nice invitation uh, for uh, YMCA College of Physical Education. I know from America, uh, y YMCA has a big tradition. Uh, many institutions hold states, uh, one of the pioneers of physical education and physical activity. Uh, I'm so glad to talk uh, for this uh, presentation. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. And I would like to thank you, YMCA College of Physical Education. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the new physical education. But actually, to be honest, uh, physical education is a, such an important subject, like almost 100 years in the world. And uh, of course, it's evolving. There are new trends. Uh, there are always good things. Uh, I don't want to say there is an old physical education, new physical education. Uh, there's the physical education subject matter, we know that. Uh, but there are some new trends and applications. I would like to talk about them. And I know that uh, before COVID-19, we have a physical inactivity issues for children in general world. And after COVID-19, this become very, very serious. 
uh, because uh, school lockdown, children couldn't move anymore. Uh, they lost their motivation. Uh, I think COVID-19, uh, they provide an important opportunity for us, for physical education teachers and physical education professors. Uh, parents are no more value of physical activity now. They appreciate more. Uh, before that, maybe that was different, but they realized when the school are locked down, uh, children at home, they couldn't go anywhere, they couldn't move anywhere, and they realized uh, the importance of physical education, physical activity. I'm so happy. I, I, I hope they will give more values. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and give some ideas. In the past, physical education was very sport-oriented, like football, basketball, volleyball, uh, I'm not, uh, of course, it's very competitive because of culture. I'm not against them. We love sports. Children love sports. Children love to play sports. That's a wonderful idea. But after COVID-19 and physical inactivity, uh, we start to think about more um, individual physical activity, like how can we motivate children, not only playing team sports, but they should be thinking about their physical activity, doing individually themselves to move the heart rate up. So this is more uh, physical activity oriented now. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Farman Konuk. I'm a faculty member at Qatar University in College of Education in the Department of Physical Education. First of all, where is Qatar by geography? is located in the Middle East, in the Gulf area, in the Arabian Sea. The capital city is Doha. As you know, uh, Qatar's biggest emphasis is mega sport events. And we will host, inshallah, 2020 World Cup in Qatar. Uh, Qatar, by culture, is really important. It's a, it's a, it's a sport hub uh, in the Middle East and in the world. Uh, as you know, being sport is an important sport channel. And also, Qatar hosts every year at least 40 to 50 international sports events. So sport as a culture, this is a really big branding in Qatar. And Qatar University, one of the leading public national university in Qatar, located in Doha and established in 1973. Uh, as of 2022, there are 23,000 students, more than 2,000 faculty members, and we have 10 colleges. So uh, College of Education recently uh, by Shanghai rank, uh, ranked as top 300 uh, college of education in the world now. Uh, of course, COVID-19 has changed the face of education. We know that. Uh, I think we think about more education, now, uh, more children and physical activity, and especially for physical education as well. Uh, as I told you before, uh, before COVID-19, uh, I think parents are not really giving priority to their children, physical education and physical activity. All parents uh, in general in the world, I work in Turkey, America, in Qatar, they really care about uh, mathematics, reading, writing, science, all, all these important subjects. For them, physical education is not a subject matter. Oh, something, kids play something like recess or not a subject matter. Uh, but after that, uh, they realize school are locked down, kids cannot go outside, kids cannot move. They stay at home with their children and they realize, whoa, school is important, teachers are important, physical education, physical activity is really, really important. We should do something about this. Uh, so I think it was a big change for us before COVID-19. Uh, children has physical activity issues. And uh, after COVID-19, this was more prominent and all parents realized kids should move, kids should do physical activity, physical education is important. And we started to think about a little bit online instruction because uh, children couldn't go to schools and distance learning started. And actually online education, distance learning is really, really common in the world. Uh, famous universities are providing free lessons uh, you can enroll. Uh, we know the online uh, education. Uh, distance learning has many benefits, definitely, like Udemy, Coursera, Khan Academy. 
provided wonderful things for children. Like uh, you can access any knowledge now is very quickly. This is it's an amazing uh, part of technology. Online public schools, actually, uh, public schools are doing nice work in online uh, teaching. Uh, for example, there is a, an example of here, uh, Florida Virtual School. Uh, it was uh, one of the first public online virtual school was founded in 1997. They call it F Florida Virtual School. Children get, can get online lessons as a for graduation credit, including physical education. Of course, 1997, there was no pandemic like that. It's, everybody can go to school. Uh, you, they can attend physically the school. But this was an idea uh, for the virtual school. Uh, children, students can get enroll some courses online and get some credit. Uh, this school currently providing more than 193 online courses for K-12 students. This is for elementary and middle high school level. It's not college level. Uh, totally including 215,000. Can you believe that? It's really amazing. Uh, now, uh, several higher education institutions start to teach online teaching modules, especially for high school, uh, high school physical education teachers for distant learning. Because COVID started, and of course, we couldn't go to schools and uh, schools are locked down. Uh, they start to think about, okay, what can we do in physical education? Uh, these modules provided content videos in physical education, assessment, pedagogical teaching ideas compared to traditional gym setting. So children using the cameras, uh, their laptops, uh, they participated in these online physical education classes. Physical education teachers provided online instruction. It's like a personal trainer during COVID-19. Uh, during this process, uh, we have interesting samples from some European countries. Uh, for example, uh, during COVID-19 physical education practice in some European countries, they follow up different strategies. Uh, for example, uh, weekly movement diaries was the most common method to encourage students for physical education in Hungary. Uh, physical education teachers were invited to teach using online distance learning in Italy. Uh, for example, at the beginning, I talked about uh, these webinar seminars. Uh, the National Association of Physical Education Teachers of the United States supported free uh, online materials for physical education teachers. These are video lessons, uh, practical and theory theoretical contents, webinars about most popular sport applications and how to teach physical education during the pandemic. Because at the beginning, teachers panicked, say, okay, what am I going to do? I never taught myself online. I'm a physical education teacher. I need to teach gym, uh, physical activity in the gym. Uh, but uh, NASPI uh, provides some free resources, website. They start to get these videos and lectures free from this association and website. And also themselves, uh, using camera, they start to teach like fitness, aerobic, archery, and some physical activities as well. So in addition, uh, they provide online questionnaires about how to organize the next school year and physical education campaign on social media. They call it, I do not stop moving lunch. Uh, these resources, this is about uh, European, this is from uh, European Physical Education Association. And those resources were free and available for all physical education teachers in Italy. Uh, teachers follow distinct learning programs with suggestion of physical education activities that could be done at home in the United States. As an example, they held online lessons and completed one hour of moderated strong physical activity daily as suggested by World Health Organization. This is really interesting. Like uh, teachers start to become more technology oriented. They have laptops, embedded cameras, or they have it's more advanced technology here, this teacher, this physical education teacher, a camera. They start to instruct from home and to children uh, using the platforms like Zoom and other platforms. And uh, kids were practicing these drills at home uh, during the pandemic. For example, teaching in Turkey, uh, we had a website, they call it EBA, Education Information Network. It's a platform from the Ministry of Education. They provided online courses for physical education 
And also, they made live broadcast on TV. It's an EBA TV. And this was prepared by Ministry of uh, Education for every class, every day at certain hours. So physical education really embedded the technology in, in instructional technology. I'm so happy because when I think about this 10 years ago or 15 years ago or five years ago, we started some wonderful technological programs in physical education, softwares, heart rate monitors. Uh, but I think exceptional Florida, uh, that Florida virtual school, we never did this, this distance learning and COVID-19 is provided an opportunity for us as a physical education subject matter. Now we are gonna return to schools, inshallah. Uh, there are some uh, scenarios. Uh, definitely COVID-19 pandemic has three conditions for returning to schools. Could be face-to-face -face education, including street protocols, or distance education, hybrid like means, uh, certain lessons at school, certain lessons face-to-face -face or distance, a hybrid, hybrid mix. Uh, definitely, Distance classroom models can be used to maximize teaching effectiveness and student learning. Uh, the key magical word is word of distance education is motivation. I always tell my students teaching and coaching, if you cannot motivate your students, they, they will not be interested. Same thing for distance learning. I believe physical education should be in class, in gym, and uh, should be uh, conducted in schools. But this is reality now. We have to do this distance learning or hybrid learning you should motivate them. I mean, if you cannot motivate them, it's gonna be so boring. There are, of course, advantage and disadvantage of this technology and distance learning. Imagine kindergartners, first graders, we know kids or in this century, they're really advanced in technology, <laughs> better than us. Uh, many times I ask always questions the high schoolers or my nephews and nieces, they give me interesting answers about technology. Uh, but also there are difficulties as well, realize that like how to adopt this culture uh, but definitely we should motivate them. I mean, if you cannot motivate, you, they ca you cannot teach them. Uh, so uh, state and school administrations should motivate teachers. The teachers should motivate the parents and the parents should motivate the student and this may lead to wonderful cooperation. Uh, in distance education, students should be provided with information, rich quality materials and evaluations. It is important to invite students to this decision-making process, right? I'm teaching distance learning, like a command direct instruction. Okay, do this, do this, arms up, left, right. Let's move, uh, let's move our heart rate. It's wonderful, but we should give them ownership, right? They should take notes. Uh, they should calculate their heart rates. They should think about their nutrition program, how many minutes physical activity they, they need. They do some maybe simple calculation, and solve and collaborate the problems. We shouldn't be like just direct instruction mode in the gym. The students should have more ownership themselves. Think about, okay, what kind of cardiovascular diet I need? Uh, what kind of strength and conditioning? What kind of nutrition I need to do, right? Uh, this is my nutrition program. This is my daily physical activity program. So I'm gonna use a simple pedometer or just maybe putting fingers and heart rate I'm gonna check my heart rate, right? If I reach my target today, or how many uh, thousand steps I did today, right? They can do that. They can collaborate and solve problems. Nice things about physical education, we can make it a multi-curricular approach. We can include some history, biology, mathematics, calculation, they can add numbers. It can be a multi-curricular subject as well. Science and mathematics oriented or social studies. Uh, definitely it's, it's gonna take time, but I think I believe teachers more uh, knowledgeable now, almost half one, more than one year. Uh, they need to know how to contact students, what they should do. Uh, students and parents can be contacted in multiple ways, letters, emails, phone calls, or video chats. Uh, simultaneous teaching often promoted through as joint lectures. They can do video conferencing and live chats. Uh, in a synchronous teaching, access information facilitated by sending message, files to students, videos, media programs, and everything. Uh, teachers can increase the quality and effectiveness of education in, in these two ways. They can do wonderful things. I remember 20 years ago, we don't have any of them like this. It was very limited. 
maybe we were using just some emails. Uh, but technology media is really advanced now. And kids are very knowledgeable. In high school level, middle school level, they are taking technology class and they are very technology oriented skilled generation. We should take adv advantage of this. Now, uh, we see more publication on teaching online physical education. Uh, definitely distance learning programs prepared by physical education teachers should reflect a value oriented approach, right? Uh, because at home children are uh, away from socialization, but definitely we need to think about how can we socialize them, right? How can we provide this communication, problem solving, cooperation? Because all students are isolated at home because of pandemic. Uh, online groups, we can assign them to the group. Like if I have 30 students, I can divide them group of fives, assign them a subject, maybe nutrition, health, physical activity, and they can develop a pro program, program together, a nutrition program, a physical activity program or exercise program, still they need to work in teams because we want them to collaborate to each other, not just being isolated. Uh, now we have a discussion, uh, physical education or physical activity education. Uh, I think both synonymous for me. I don't want to call it just new physical education. Uh, physical education has history of more than 100 years. Uh, early pioneers did wonderful things in physical education. Uh, we are doing nothing different or new now, but we have more technology, more equipment, more measurement uh, because of this uh, century. Uh, but I think it seems that becoming more, more physical activity education now. Definitely, I call it physical education, but it seems becoming more physical activity education now. During this pandemic, physical education teachers acting like a personal trainer or coach, right? Uh, we give them directions, online instruction, nutrition, uh, how many steps, what kind of strength training they can do at home, how they can organize their nutrition. Uh, we become like individual coach, personal trainer during this pandemic. I think this is a wonderful idea. Definitely, we don't need to isolate them, anybody, but they should think about more themselves. What can I do, right? And physical education, we can call it physical activity education and has many benefits as well. This approach has many benefits, but also disadvantages as well, right? Teachers should develop online programs that will enable students to develop their basic skills at home, at their own level. Because motivation is important. If they are confused, if it's boring, if they cannot, if they are not achievable, it's gonna be a disadvantage. Uh, teachers can prepare health and wellness-based model that promotes healthy lifestyles because of physical inactivity. Uh, Health and wellness, uh, healthy lifestyles modules are uh, around last 20 years. We have some uh, books or cards, really nice uh, prepared publications about this. Uh, that's the way to go now. I mean, because the number one concern is our children's health. Uh, I mean, many, many months they are locked down. They lost uh, physical activity and this caused a lot of issues. And they are stressed as well. Think about that. A part can be practical application in physical education. Uh, we can use heart rate monitors, it's the simplest one. Uh, but if we don't have any money, any technology, I think I always used to use this, uh, how to measure your heart rate from this carotid artery. They can do simple cal calculations, minutes multiply. Uh, but definitely this technology is really getting cheaper and cheaper now. Uh, one of the ways could be using heart rate monitors if it's available. Uh, or uh, we have pedometers now, they're really, really becoming cheap. Uh, we can make them for school equipment. Uh, each child can assign a pedometer, uh, but Polar is doing wonderful things. Uh, they can do many, many things with Polar if we can integrate them to school physical education programs with a budget or a grant or something like that. So we can do home physical education activities using heart rate monitor. So uh, they can uh, maintain to moderate level of physical well-being during lockdown while they are using heart rate monitors to track their students' performance and progression. Teachers can check this online as well. Uh, they can see the monitor, how uh, children's heart rate changing and look at that. Uh, definitely, 
home activities using heart rate monitor in as an idea. We can assess their daily physical activity. We can get some accurate results. I think could be a good motivation for both students and teachers. And it can provide as a kind of valid data for a health and education sector as well. Okay. Uh, they can design a home physical activities program using uh, GIF and animated art, uh, polar heart rate again. It can be an introduction session for parents and students. We can conduct some fitness tests and start and starting and following up some evaluation as well. So uh, these are some, just some ideas. Uh, I think the main problem for physical education teaching profession now, uh, in general in the world, we are feeling negative effects of what is uh, proving to be the longest and most severe epidemic and financial crisis. Uh, schools has tough budgets, people lost their jobs, uh, physical education teachers losing their jobs or they have limited opportunity uh, because of pandemic. Before pandemic, it was many issues. Now we have more issues. Uh, schools were eliminating physical education programs and physical education teachers. And teachers are having hard time to find full-time jobs uh, before epidemic. Now after epidemic realize it's gonna be worse as well. Uh, because many schools, uh, school districts, or countries doesn't see physical education as a subject matter. For them, oh, it's a recess or playing sports. Uh, they give more emphasis to other academic subjects, unfortunately. Uh, this causes a moral issues for us. Definitely, there are negative issues in physical education programs uh, resulting from the current conditions as well. A low workplace moral, uh, the elimination of teaching as well, coaching positions, increase in physical education class size and decline resources like equipment and supplies. This was reality before uh, COVID-19 pandemic and it's becoming more predominant now. But physical education teachers must understand the current pandemic and economic situation and they find themselves in a react in an appropriate manner and timely fashion if they are continue to develop professional and maintain job security. So let's be positive, let's think, let's work hard, use advantage of some of technology. I think parents and schools are more aware of what causes this physical inactivity. Uh, schools are locked down, kids are at home, they cannot move, they cannot do nothing. They see now the importance and power of physical education and they realize, whoa, well, I mean, physical education is such an important subject. Uh, we should emphasize this, Kids are becoming overweight. They are losing their motivation. They are hook up the technology. They are always have iPads or computers. Nobody moves anymore, right? Because this later is going to cause a lot of kinesthetic diseases. Like right? uh, we should intervene early uh, to provide all of diseases, uh, including early child education. Because when kids come to school, it's too late, right? They have all hygiene and nutrition habits is all they learn. But school physical education, health and physical education programs can do early intervention, wonderful things for children. Because when they grow up, when they come to college level or when they become adult, it's too late, right? Uh, you spend billion dollars uh, for this uh, obesity issue, but it's easy to early intervention, uh, especially in school physical education programs. Uh, we used to define school physical education programs promoting healthy lifestyles for children for a lifetime, uh, this should be a motto, right? I, I always tell my physical education students when, become, when you become a teacher, if you see a child later, many, many years later, he become an adult. And if, if he or she says, thank you to you, uh, my physical education teacher, thank you because uh, we had a wonderful physical education class. You taught us about importance of physical activity, health, nutrition, because of your teaching and direction, I'm walking 30 minutes per day now, right? I'm checking my nutrition. I do my best to, to, part, to join physical activity, like uh, even walking, right? 30 minutes per day. I, I play sports. I go swimming. Uh, this is a lifetime commitment in effect, right? I tell them, you save someone's life. Like, that's the most beautiful gift in the world. Uh, it's recommended that for physical education teachers remain visibly positive, be innovative and flexible in all areas pertaining to their job, 
Uh, be with as competent, professional, and innovative teachers by school authorities, parents, students, and members of the community. Now we are more visible. We are providing this online lectures, physical activities to our children. Parents see that, like importance of physical education and physical activity. Uh, physical education teachers should become more skillful in technology and distance learning. Like compared to one and a half year, teachers are more knowledgeable about technology. They know uh, how to integrate many programs to uh, distance learning. Physical education teachers must maintain a positive attitude, remain enthusiastic, even under the most distressed conditions. They must be effective promoters and advocates of themselves and their program to school administrators and parents as well. Uh, I think they see more now what we do for them. Uh, definitely, we have needs perspective in physical education. We, we, are, we are giving more emphasis also teaching physical education and support to children with disabilities, uh, like physically disabled or children we have uh, autistic children now in our society, they are in our schools. Uh, we, we realize we should uh, serve them as well for physical activity. Uh, but physical education is not just only playing fitness uh, or sports or uh, physical activity. We have to emphasize also fair play and character development, like this uh, psycho psychosocial aspects. Uh, because we always give emphasis to psychomotor domain, right? Play, play, sport, sport. But we have to think about this effective domain, right? Uh, how we can make them good citizens, right? Role models. How they can think about fair play, not cheating, right? How we can they develop their characters as well. Uh, Definitely, we are going to be more on individual technology-oriented instruction. We will reach them. We are going to be like a personal trainer and coach them to advocate healthy lifestyles. These are some references is available here. Uh, in general, I talk about general concepts. Uh, I know you know many of them. Uh, this is uh, available on multimedia, all that resources. Uh, I believe this is a, is a new opportunity for us after COVID-19. We can provide wonderful things to children and parents using distance learning, and we can motivate them for a better physical education. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any question, I would like to answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your excellent presentation. Dear participants, now the time for interaction with our resource person, Dr. Furman. Those who want to interact, you can unmute yourself and speak. Otherwise, you can type your questions in the chat box. Now open to forum. Sir, uh, we have received some of the questions in the chat box. Can I ask on behalf of the participants? Of course, yeah. This uh, is from Mr. Girinadan. Yeah. What, uh, type, what, of, yeah, what go ahead. type of activities prefer engineering college students our technical education on COVID-19, that is uh, this pandemic, pandemic situation. Right. I think college uh, students, uh, the, the biggest thing they need to think about the nutrition first, like right? uh, what kind of nutrition I have now, I have more limited activity. Uh, the biggest thing I recommend walking because walking is the most fun activity. If they can walk 30 minutes per day, moderate the regret, right? Not slowly. Uh, I, I think physical activity concept is changed now a little bit. Uh, we don't have to be in on the gym, on treadmill, run hours and hours. It's not that like that anymore. Uh, you can walk, uh, you can do some home chores, uh, you can take the stairs, uh, less driving, or you, if you have a bike, you can go to school by bike. Uh, basically, aerobic activities are recommended now. Uh, I always say the easy way is walking, 30 minutes moderate the vigorous, but at home also, they can do some plyometric drills with their own body weight, like uh, self squats, jump ropes. They don't need many equipments at all. So they can do pull up, push up. Of course, they need a good warm up and stretching before. Uh, definitely recommend it. They can do many plyometric drills. I, I had some publication. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And also, uh, yoga for uh, mental uh, training. Yoga is really important. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your interaction. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. On behalf of the Weinstein College of Physical Education, Management, 
principal on behalf of the YMC college staff members i'm delighted to present the e certificate please thank accept you, sir thank you very much it's my honor to accept thank you sir now we have a eminent personality with us now i'm very much happy to introduce dr anup adekari exercise physiologist creatinine level 4 anthropometrist personal training specialist nutrition and well known well wellness specialist first aid instructor such a multi talented person with us presently he is working as a international instructor for anthropometry for north america usa canada and mexico and indian subcontinents like india bangladesh pakistan nepal and sri lanka and first aid and cpr instructor of canadian red cross he is having own gymnasium previously he has served as a exercise physiologist exercise physiologist sports authority of india he has been foreign expert for sports sciences uh, government of bangladesh he has served as a associate professor professor in the department of medical physiology uh, kathmandu university uh, school of medical science nepal he studied in various universities across the globe india australia new zealand spain portugal uh, singapore usa and canada he has been visited more than 19 countries across the world for official purpose he has published more than 65 research papers in various international conferences sir we are made very much fortunate to have you here as a resource person we invite our resource person dr anup adhikari to share the knowledge sir please let me share it one minute Meguna, yeah. Screen. Can I see now? Is it? Is it okay? One minute. Yes, sir. Okay. What I do? One minute. Just one minute. Share it. One minute. Yes. Is it okay now? Yeah. Perfect, sir. Perfect. Is okay now? Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Uh, actually, my computer sometimes gets problem over here. Okay. Let me go straight to my topics because time is very short. So today's my my topic is actually application of anthropometry. Uh, that is anthropometry and body composition is application in sports and physical education. So first, let us start. What is anthropometry? Of course, you know. Anthropometry is a science which deals with the measurement of size, shape, and proportion of the human body. Of course, you know. But when this anthropometry is alive, we call somatometry. When this somatometry or anthropometry deals with morphological aspects and application of morphological aspects to movement. and factors which influence the movements they this one we call kin anthropometry of course when we discuss with the this is the same is actually somatometry or anthropometry when we discuss with the structure function and factors okay factors which influence the movement like body composition nutrition body shape phenotype maturation motor abilities physiological physiology and physical activities that anthropometry call as keen anthropometry some people they have idea that they have some uh, tip, uh, means they think that keen anthropometry is a sports anthropometry no is a somatometry is a somatometry sports anthropometry the part of keen anthropometry now keen keen anthropometry is actually based on its somatotype and body composition of course there are other anthropometrical parameters are there suppose body length bone length etc but the base of the kin anthropometry is somatotype and body composition so let us start the somatotype body composition later then we will see how we can apply the kin anthropometry or anthropometry in sports and physical education let me just finish this part 
Now, somatotype is the classification of human physique based on body shape and size. Or more precisely, you can say we are quantifying the human body. We are giving some points from point five to twelve plus. Giving some points. For example, suppose suppose somebody says Onupi is muscular, and uh, Shotish is also muscular, and George is there. He doesn't. He has, he has not seen us. Both Onup and Shotish. It's so very difficult for him to judge whether Onup is more muscular or Shotish is more muscular. If somebody says no, Onup muscular it is six, Shotish muscular it is four. It is easy for some other person who had never seen us to say that Onup is more muscular than Shotish. Similarly, this way we can we classify it. So mere precisely, that's what we call the anthropometry. The somatotype is a quantification of human size and shape of the human body. We quantify from 0.5 to 12 plus. Previous up to nine, now we go up to 12 plus. So the whole body actually expresses into three components. Actually, all human body we have all we have the muscularity, all we have the obesity, fattiness. All we have linearity. All three characters we have, but one character is more prominent than other two. Okay, so first of all, come the three component which all human body they have, whether they are obese, or fatty, whether they are muscular, whether they are lean, whatever. But all they have the three character. These three characters are components we call endomorphy, which is fat component, represent fattiness. Mesomorphy, the muscle component, which represent muscularity, and ectomorphy, lean component, represent linearity. Means stress body. So these three components they actually express our human body. All we have, all these three components. Out of these three components, one is more prominent, other two less from less. So that's how we do it. Okay. And for example, this one. Okay. This is the endomorphy example of endomorphy, and it quantifies the fattiness from 0.5 to 9 plus. The mesomorphy refers to the relative muscularity of the body. It quantifies from 5 to 9 plus, and ectomorphy refers to the relative linearity of the body. It quantifies linearity from 0.5 to 9 plus. Now. Now, when you record the somatotype, when you record it, you always keep in a sequence of three numbers. Is in a similar manner. First, endomorphy, then mesomorphy, then ectomorphy. We can't write that that ectomorphy will come first, then ectomorphy, mesomorphy, endomorphy. No, it is endomorphy, mesomorphy, and ectomorphy. For example, we can write it like. Three, five, two. So three represent endomorphy, five represent mesomorphy component, and two ectomorphy. Okay. So this is the way always we record the somatotype. Of course, you know we record the somatotype. Now, for example, this one, first one. It is from Heath Carter. Of course, you have seen it. So it is eleven six half. She is she is fatty. Eleven is too much. Fatty endomorphy is too much. At the same time, she is muscular. Six muscularity, very good muscularity, and linearity means straightness, point five only. Then mesomorphy, half eleven and one. You see the muscularity is eleven. Very good muscularity. Very good muscularity. But at the same time, endomorphy is 0.5, and ectomorphy is one. It should not go down 0.5. Okay, then the ectomorphy. You see the linear. The body type is one to eight. Eight ectomorphy is eight. Means too much stress. He's, he's actually Maasai from Kenya, Maasai group. Okay, he's one to eight. So he's linear, but uh, ectomorphy is too much eight. But mesomorphy less, endomorphy is very less. 
Now, when you classify them, if it is 0.5 to 2 and half, we call it low. If it is 3 to 5, is moderate. 5 and half to 7, high. 7.5 to above, we call extremely high. This is a classification of the, what is the Carter, with my teacher also. This is a classification of the Carter and Hick. So you always do this one, but if you don't have that much you know, group classification, you can use a group classification also. But this is international classification where you can say low muscularity, moderate muscularity, high muscularity, extremely high muscularity, like that way. Moderate fattiness, low fattiness, moderate fattiness, high fattiness, extremely high fattiness, like that way. Then comes method of smart typing. Of course, one has told you how to calculate it. Just I have to show it now. So there are heat cutter method. Okay, there are so many, but we now use the heat cutter method. In 1967, actually heat cutter introduced this method and the only method to obtain some of the type component value. There are two types of heat cutter method. One is heat cutter anthropometric method, where we measure the enthromatic parameters, kinfold thicknesses, height and weight, um, circumferences, all these. But number two is heat cutter photoscopic method, where we use only a photograph and height weight ratio. For the first group, you see the sister and the brother, for them, because their development is similar, it is there, similar development, okay? So for them, we have, we can, we will use heat cutter anthropometric method. But for these group, those are physically challenged, they can't stand up sometimes, they can't. They don't have a, uh, 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 them, you can't ask for them height or weight. For them, you have to use the photograph. Photographs of the upper part, sorry, front side, back side, and sideways. From the, from this photograph, and you can calculate the somatotype of these people. But for normal population, those who are actually similar development, I still say normal, similar, fashion development, we use the number one heat cutter anthropometric method. Where, and I am, I am actually, there are only eight or nine people who know the photoscopic typing, the second one, I am one of them. So when you teach the classes, I teach them, but not here, it's, it takes some time. So in heat cutter method, in the anthropometric method, we use 10 measurements. Two is base, height and weight, and four, kinfold thicknesses, thrices, Subscapular, supraspinally, and cap, and with breath by epicondylar humerus and femur breath, and girth is the upper arm flex, and calf girth, medial calf. We need these 10 measurements, and you can calculate the uh, use the heat cutter somatotype method by enthermic method. We can calculate the somatotype. So, I'm talking. so these equations, I'm not going to discuss the decisions, is available in all the books. Now, when you plot it, when you plot it in a chart, we call somatic a chart. But the thing is the somatic chart is a three-dimensional, where X is a parameter, Y is a parameter, Z is a parameter, three, X, Y, Z. So, but when you plot it, we plot it in a two-dimensional diameter. So we have to convert the X and Y and Z into two, X and Y, X is, so Y equal to two X into this, and Y, X into like that way, then you can plot it and you can, you can you can you can make a program that how they should go. Most of the players nowadays they like to some ectomorphic mesomorph zone, this zone, but this zone is in the morphic mesomorph. So these are the zones are there. So you can go to the books, you can find it out. So you can plot it in the somato chart. Now the body composition, because the time is short. In body composition is the combination of relative amount of fat mass and fat femurs. What is the fat femurs? Bone, water, muscles, connective tissue, organ tissue, and others. In sports and physical education, we always concern with the non-essential fat, not the essential fat, because there are two types of fats up there, essential and non-essential. In sports and physical education, we always consider the non-essential fat, which is also known as subcutaneous fat. And the value, that is standard value nowadays, it is men for the men, it should be six to eight percent, not more than that, and women eight to 18 percent. Previously, the man was, eight to 12 percent, women was 15 to 18 percent. But nowadays, the Jamaican population, Jamaican athlete, they reduce the fat percentage to six to eight percent. 
women also 8 to 18 percent even for the swimmers also previously we have idea the swimmer should have more fat for the bouncy but after the thought in the australian sport they said why should you carry excess fat instead of excess fat will carry more muscle mass so this is a standard value remember this is a model this is a model of olympic games those who are best athlete in the olympic their fat percents are like that 6 to 8 percent and 8 to 18 percent so consider this one not the other okay now there are techniques are there in fat calculation we used to two techniques which is uh, valid for all all the population one is roger cattle one is shiriatal so there is 4.57 over body density and this and siri method 4.95 by body density so important is body density so we have to find out the body density now this body density we can calculate by different equations different equations but out of that darwin and omer's equation in 1974 is valid for all population i work with this equation with um, all population across the world from new zealand to up to uh, not everywhere but they are everywhere the darwin and omer's is valid where you have to measure the biceps triceps subscapular and supra iliac but it is supra iliac and supra spinalis both are same be careful supra iliac we don't use now we use it supra spinalis both are same now there are other methods also to calculate the body density these are actually you know hydro density method these are actually via don't use the bia because bia totally depends on uh, dehydration if there is less water it will show you not perfect result that's why we don't prefer bia and also the um, dexa this is actually gold standard dexa but more more expensive more expensive also you can use the bot pod also that is so more accurate but for indian population we have to validate it and now application of anthropometry in physical education and sports now what anthropometry does in sports we know anthropometry in the sports what you can say we deal with the shape size length and others then anthropometry plays an important role in talent identification evaluation and monitoring the growth and development of an athlete and anthropometry acts as a scientific backup to the coaches for the development of sport performance that is the important part of the anthropometry you are as a working as a scientific backup to the coaches now now in sport performance try to do how they help by identifying the ideal body shape suitable for specific sports during talent identification by assisting the coaches and trainer a scientific backup to prepare the training program by evaluating the players muscularity fatness and linearity and by evaluating the monitoring the sport specific muscularity fatness linearity body shape before during and after a scheduled strength training program and by identifying and comparing anthropometrically with the with their international counterparts so this is the how anthropometry help the coaches to develop the sports performance now i usually the athletes during uh, talent during adolescent period the time we can use it we can plot them when we measure we can plot them then you can see the higher they should go here see the we, we this is a data of uh, some someone from kerala and she is here he is muscularity is not uh, not bad not good but he is slightly anomorphic so target is here to be make he hard to make an an athlete we should move on to this zone that is the way to monitor to say that he should or she should go there then for example here we can monitor it suppose the mesomorphic muscularity every month every month every month we are measuring the muscularity for suppose for the red person red person the muscularity is increasing that much but for the green person green boy he is muscularity is increasing so you can tell the coach the coach see the muscularity is improving there is something wrong with the training program or wrong with the nutritional part so you have to contact you have to, you can advise the coach to contact if you are if you think your training part is perfect you can contact with the nutritionist somewhere there is some problem which is not allowing the uh, subject mesomorphy to improve so this is the way way how we can monitor the training program okay so this is the way anthropometry can help it 
Next, you can say compare. Okay, you can plot them and you can see where they are. Be careful. Nowadays, weight lifter, weight thrower, and the wrestler. Previously, they used to say for the to stability, they used to keep more body weight by increasing their fatness. But nowadays, they say no. We'll increase the body weight by increasing the muscularity, not by any more. It's the old data from Olympic old data. But nowadays, all are here. All are here in atomorphic metamorph zone. Nowadays, we don't uh, don't increase our body weight to get more what you can say stability by in, by increasing our endomorphic component. We always say no more muscularity, more muscularity, more muscularity, more weight, more stability. So this is the international counterpart. You can compare it there also. You can compare these are Bangladesh. When I was in Bangladesh, I measured them. You see, they are poor, not poor. They are balanced at the middle, not poor, not good, not bad. So I told the coaches, these are national level junior players. You have to move them. You have to improve the muscularity, and you have to move them to the uh, ectomorphic mesomorph. And mesomorphic should be minimum six. So I told them you have to increase your plan, your training program. At the same time, you have to talk with your nutritionist to improve the muscularity. So you can the, you can use the anthropometry where to they have to go, and you can you can evaluate the players also. An application of anthropometry in physical education. Now, physical education is the, in my opinion, it is the backbone of a country. In my view, one of the important role of a physical educator is to help children to work on their fitness and give them to tools to lead to a healthy and physically active lifestyle. As because physical education is the backbone, why I'm saying if the children are not developed physically, Automatically, they can't develop mentally. So if the children of a nation is not developed properly, whole nation, uh, one day, the nation will collapse. That's why the physical role of the physical education teacher is very, very, very important. That the, they are making the backbone of a country. So my request to the physical education teachers, when you are in a school or college, wherever, especially I'm talking about the school, you have an important role to develop the society. You call your students, you measure their body type, fat percentage, and other measurements. I'm not talking about the agility and other physical fitness tests. I'm talking about the enthoric measurements. Then you can plot it every month. And then you can call the, call the guardian, their parents, that you see your children is not developing. Your children is developing not the perfect way. You must have some problem, you must, they must have some food problem, or they must have some activity problem. So you can, they, that way, you can correct their movement, you can correct their body type, you can correct their body fat percentage. In the meantime, you can develop the nation. That's why the physical education, in my view, they are the, they are building the backbone of the country, all over the world, in India also. So, as a physical education teacher, you must develop the society, you must know the anthropometry of a anthropometry, you must know how to measure the fatty, um, uh, body composition, you must know how to measure the masculinity, endomorphy, and ectomorphy. In that way, you can develop the society. So, in that case, physical education can take the help of anthropometry to develop the healthy, physically active lifestyle by identifying, monitoring, and evaluating the body shape, size, along with growth and development of each parameters. The important role of physical educator, maybe he's in school, maybe in college, or maybe in university. Everywhere, role is same. You have to develop there. So you have to know the instrument perfectly. You have to know the how to measure the perfectly. You have to know the which equipment is perfect. Then only you can develop it. And Thank you very much. I think I am in the time. So thank you very much. If you have any questions or any doubt, you can call, you can mail me to Dr. Nupadi at yahoo.com. And also my WhatsApp number is 001-647-997-4999. So I think I am in time. So thank you very much for, uh, for, for, for inviting me in this conference. Thank you, Jared. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I, I, time I think I have. Yeah, I have more than a couple of minutes.
operated by in office. Uh, and yeah, I think I'm done. Unmute, sir, Mugil, sir. Please unmute. Uh, first question, operated by in office. Uh, what is the reference range of ஒருத்தன் Oh, that is, you can go any uh, non-essential non fat, you can go to any physiology book, Gyanangar Gaitam, that is 3% for the uh, male and 8% uh, around the female. But for this reference, it, you can go any paper, any sports scientific paper, uh, you will get it, any journal, you will get it. Now, at the, previously it was 12-80%, to now it came down, because last time Ocean Bolt and others, the values are 6-8%. and women that play girl who became this time unluckily second but she used the best record in 10.60 second for the alley alley her fat percentage is 8% the jamaican yeah jamaican sportsman yeah thank you sir thank you sir. second yes. question yes. Uh, how can uh, grand parliamentary will use it in talent identification and how use this model in sports yeah in talent identification very important because actually anthropometry for Uh, to know the not only the talent identification in talent okay first will come the talent identification in talent identification when the boy comes you must have to measure especially according to the game but first with body type and segments okay arm length arm span um, um uh, sitting high according to the game then you can group classify and then you can choose them but in because in india we don't have that data bank so what you have to do suppose for 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 chennai population you measure the chennai children make a group classification then plus minus 1 hd is average plus minus 1 hd to 2 hd is good 2 hd to 3 hd is excellent because we don't have the data bank in that way you can um, you can uh, identify the talent according to the game for example suppose for uh, kayaking or rowing you have to measure the arm span arm length and also uh, sitting height but for the footballer you have to measure the muscularity for the suppose basketball player they should be ectomorphic muscular they should be lean but but muscularity should be 5 uh, to 6 not 5 to 6 not more than that but they should be lean leanity should be more than the endomorphic so according to game you can you can use anthropometry for talent identification and for first promotion national team when there is a national team you must measure the player first once you know the player's body type their muscularity endomorphy and mesomorphy ectomorphy and their fattiness then you can make a training program i am a personal trainer what i do i first measure the player i find out the body type and fat percentage then accordingly i make the training program thank you thank you sir thank you. Yeah. the last question asked by dr thirumalai kumar sir uh, tamil nadu tribunal sports university please explain the role of anthropometry in preparing competitors for para olympics and sports yeah uh, para olympic just a horoscopy that's i'm saying the hit cutter there are two method one is anthropometric method for yeah. image height weight skin fold and cap guard and cap guard and uh, arm guard but the for the para olympic they can't stand up okay for them you have to use the photoscopic anthropometric method it takes time but when i take the classes i will teach them how to do the photoscopic paralympic you can't use the anthropometric method both are hit cutter method but you have to use the photoscopic method for the paralympic players thank, thank you sir. yes sir thank you sir uh, thank you. thanks sir, for the answer it was a very wonderful and informative section sir and i opening for all participants in this conference uh, sir on behalf of wayne state college management correspondent secretary principal administrative officer estate manager and executive secretary organizing secretary staffs and students we appreciate the excellent presentation we have honored you are being a part of this conference
as a token of appreciation we could like to uh, present the e certificate which is displayed virtually on the screen can be accepted sir sir please kindly ask me oh yeah thank you very much yeah thank you very thank much you. thank you thank, thank you so much yeah thank you sir thank you. Okay, next, move on to the next resource person. Dr. Lee Wong Meng is currently an independent scholar, research specialist in youth mentoring, youth development, research development, outdoor recreation, and sports development. He has a PhD in extension education, a master's in park and outdoor recreation from University Putra, Malaysia, and a master's in business administration. Previously, sir, he was a research fellow at the Institution for Social Science Studies, University Putra, Malaysia. He had also worked at the International Youth Center, Kuala Lumpur, as a youth program fellow, as well as the Institution for Youth Research, Ministry of Youth and Sports. He had been active with the Commonwealth Secretary on professionalism of youth work, World Leisure Organization. He was also involved with the sports entering of, of marathons and outdoor excursions. Thank you, sir. Welcome you, sir, for the uh, platform. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you, Josh, for uh, inviting me to, to this session. So I will, uh, as a last speaker, I'm uh, going to take, uh, as a last speaker, I'm going to take you all away from the physical sciences of sports, which all the other, all everybody seems to be talking about. I will take you all to a new world of new dimension of sports, which is uh, related to the social sciences part aspects of it. So uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, my presentation will be a lot of very conceptual ideas I came out with uh, from my scholarly work as well as from my own experience in, in sports. And I was also pre at one time involved in orienteering. Um, so I come from a different world, not directly in the sports world, but uh, from developmental world, you development, recreation, and so on. So I have a different perspective of sports than most of you, if not all of you. So let's see how it goes. Uh, allow me to share my slide now. Can you see my side? Oh, wait. Uh, let me share again the different one. Um, okay. Can you see my slide now? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Let me change the screen. Uh, wait. I want to uh, hang on, hang on. I, I have to minimize the, the gallery. <laughs> mm. So let's um, go to the slides. Um. Yes, yes, sir. Down. Okay. Mm. Yes, perfect, professor. Hang on. <laughs> And now I want to change the speaker. Yeah. I'm still, <coughs> hang on. Okay, Wait, hang on. I'm still like new to. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to minimize the gallery, the photo speaker where 
Mm -hmm. I cannot see my own slides. Sorry. So great. Uh, wait. Hey, what happened? Hey, oh, I'm sorry. I'm seeing the whole gallery of the. Uh, looking for a button. Let's. Hello. Okay, it's perfect. Okay, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see the whole gallery blocking my own view of the slides. I'm looking for a button that minimized the... Hang on. Yes. Anybody can help me there? I, sorry about that. Uh, wait, let me... Sorry, I... Let me exit. Uh, no. Hmm. Hey, what happened? I sorry, everyone. Uh, I'm a bit. I see, you can see the slides? Yes, perfect. You can start. Yeah. Okay. Um, this will be the topic I'll be sharing today. So it's a bit... Uh, okay. So I'm looking at the educational development of sports through leisure sports which is uh oh, yeah, yeah. 36 slides um I don't know what okay i'm so um these are generally my background and my areas I've uh, that's why I say I come from a location background because I've been associated with rural Asia. So let's skip it. And of course, this is where I come from, Malaysia. Uh, I realized there was a first speaker from Malaysia also. <laughs> so uh, all right. This is a statement about education. Since my topic will be about education. Let me start with uh, this quote by Kurt Han. The aim of education is, uh, is to impel people with values, forming experiences to ensure the survival of these qualities and enterprising curiosity and undefeatable spirit, tenacity in pursuit, and above all, compassion. It is capable neglect not to impel young people into experience. So, um, why can I minimize this uh, gallery? Hey, sorry, I, uh, participant raise hand. I, so, um, as Hmm. Wait. I still cannot see the whole of my slides. Um. All right. Sports has been generally known to be perceived. It's about competition, elite, performance, and so on, and that sports is about collecting medals but, uh, and titles. But is that sports all about? Sports actually it goes into leisure, recreation, development, learning, and education. Have we? So this is where we will explore that in this session. 
So um, in this talk, we aim to look at different concepts and approaches to sport development dimension and education, particularly in the context of Malaysia sport. So to, for the audience, all of you, it is to see what sport is that goes beyond competitions, performance, excellence, and that through sports, there are other um, various development goals that can be vehicles for education. So basically, this talk is about looking at education through sports. So, uh, can, I, uh, can I interrupt this for a while? Uh, let, let me... Uh, wait, can I stop sharing and then reopen again, if you don't mind? I cannot see my whole presentation. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, you can share your screen again. That the slide was perfect. Yeah, I because on my side, I, I need to minimize the the gallery all the faces. Hang on, hang on. Let me change the view. All right, uh, sharing. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Oh my, I don't know. So actually, uh, so actually, this is something which I recently developed with a friend of mine who we look at sports from a very broad perspective that this is the whole, actually the whole scope of sport is an ecosystem. So there are many things about sports which uh, other than competitions, as I, what I mentioned earlier, so this is an ecosystem. In fact, this model is something which uh, I and my colleague is working on for a book in the future, and we'll see what happens in a year or so. So in this context of sports uh, with Malaysia, uh, this, uh, this model has been developed by, I'm not sure you heard of him, Robert Stabbings of the University of Calgary who's a board member, used to be a board member of World Asia. So you see, he looks at Malaysia in three contexts. And uh, uh, casual, serious project. Casual are more like activities which are spontaneous, which is for fun. Well, serious Malaysia, which is more long-term, uh, which develops skills and so on. Uh, Project-based is like only one-off kind of activity or over a certain like, several activities. Well, um, so in sports, in this whole context of sports of uh, Malaysia, he classifies sports under the category of serious Malaysia because uh, it involves a long time uh, uh, commitment in the field of Malaysia when it comes to Malaysia activities. Um, this is a three serious perspectives of Malaysia, Robert Stabbings. So when we look for, so these are the context which of sport we have found uh, from various um, literature and so on. Of course, most of us know it's about the competition, but they are also uh, Cogley, uh, but Cogley, Jay Cogley has also talked about sports for development, so is the United Nations. And then uh, on the human side, there's a uh, sports development for child, children, and it's meant for social change. So in these two broad context comparative, um, you talk about, most of us talk about sports as performance, but there's also sports about development. So in the development, you can see the context and characteristics of sports are a bit different, you see? 
uh, they are, they look at different aspects of sports uh, in terms of participation and so on. So in sports, there's these two, two main sciences, physical and social sciences. So development side of sports comes under the social sciences. Right? In the physical sciences are competition and then physical education and also skills or that thing. And now, as you can see in this uh, current scenario, health is become an important component in everybody's life. And health is related to sports. So sports has evolved from mere performance to also everybody's well-being, which includes physical, mental, and so on. So if it's too fast, you can let me know. Um, Victoria can share the slide with the organizers if you want. Uh, and of course, in this current scenario, especially with COVID, most people are more concerned with uh, sports within their home. Yeah, everybody is locked down. And then in the sports industry, you see even the Olympic Games, everybody is suffering. Industry is affected by restrictions in use of sports, uh, in terms of uh, spectatorship and so on. So, so this is a time for sports to look at more on the development aspect uh, rather than the industry, be beyond the industry of competitions and professional sports. So this is basically the sort of uh, general definition characteristics of uh, uh, general characteristics of leisure and sports. What we mean by leisure and leisure sports. So these are some of the characteristics which has been uh, defined by, uh, by the literature, by several experts and so on. Is there some people raising hands? Let, let me check. Uh, okay. Am I, uh, so, uh, now I'm seeing the. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to pull down the statement for people raising hands. Uh, all right. Maybe some of you are familiar with uh, this pyramid of sports, sports pyramid. So you look at, I have introduced uh, perceiving from two contexts. One is the development, the physical sciences of how you develop sports. And this is where, when they come to talk about talent, you know, it starts from a break on physical sciences. But on the other hand, when you look from education and uh, de development perspective, the model should be the other way around. You see, you start from participation and then from there you learn to grow and you develop. So in sports, part uh, Sports development is for participating, growing, and developing. Whereas in uh, the sports sciences, competition area is from play to performance and into excellence. All right. Um, so now we come to the educational part of sports. Um, since I studied uh, extension education, so I look at sports from three perspectives. And I think this has been advocated by many educationists. That's uh, formal education, non-formal and informal education. As uh, I believe all of you realize that uh, when it comes to uh, physical education, it's more on the formal education aspect. But for sports to be developmental, it has to take the less, the non-formal or even the, to the informal approach of education, which, um, which can be in schools under co curriculum program or it can be out of school program. 
And this is where leisure-based uh, education, experiential learning and so on comes in. Okay, um, learning and education are different things. Learning is the act of process or process to effect behavior change, knowledge and so on. But education is the activity itself. So in sports, education refers to the sports activities that contributes to knowledge, attitudes, skill changes in the play or participant. Growth and development then are the outcomes of learning education through sports. So in development sports, we are talking about uh, learning, growth and development, not about performance. So sports to develop, I've come up with a model soon. Um, learning to sports, in sports, educating and sports culture and values. So in the overall uh, sort of levels of development, uh, you talk about learning, you talk about educating, you talk about instilling culture and value. So this is where I, um, I formulate this model of uh, learning, educating, instilling. So when you want to, sports you want to develop, you have to learn. That, these are the three bridges of sports development. And uh, for sports development to, to be developed, education is important and necessary. Without education, how do we learn how to change? Even in performance, you know, the individual has to learn to be educated in how to perform, how to excel. So it depends on what you want to what outcomes you want in sports, whether for performance, for participation, development, or for economy, which is more in the industry. And uh, <clears throat> there are not only one di dimension about sports development education, which most people feel is about physical education, but it can be also leisure-based education, which is very focused to for intervening, uh, preventive, and, uh, and recuperative uh, ed education. You see, and of course, sports education, which combines both um, uh, physical and social sciences of sport. So these are some models which have been suggested and uh, we all decide uh, as an audience in this current era, which is more relevant now. Is, it, is physical education still relevant now or it needs to be modified or it needs to be introduced with new forms of education? So sports for development education now, you look at these are the different contexts, you see. Uh, so here we are talking about why we teach to sports, you see. And uh, I came up with this to differentiate the different, the three different types of uh, education for sports. You got a physical education, which, which most people are aware of. And then you have sports education, leisure-based education. So, so to this part of leisure-based education is more of a for a, uh, development and well-being, whereas uh, for the performance, physical education, these are these are the curriculum which I gather from the different literature. You know, um, that this, the the scope of physical education. So. In this context, I came up with uh, this model of learning when you talk about uh, uh, sports for development, it has to be guided, the gear models. It is learning to experience, it must be activity-based, it must be reflection to realization and self-understanding and self-discovery. So this is something which uh, is still to be explored. Um, you see, so and how this works is in this model. Uh, you learn to, you know, when you talk about expansion learning, these are all the different ways of learning, of educating people. And uh, this is a model by uh, Simon Priest that in the normal structured learning, this is what you, this is a system process. From the theory as so one, you go to the practical. Whereas in experiential learning concept, from the you start from the activity and then you learn the principles at the end of the at the end of it. 
So this is Simon Priest who teaches uh, adventure education and so on from his book. So uh, when it comes to um, exploration learning, maybe some of you are familiar with the COP learning cycle. You can explore further. Uh, and of course, uh, you see there are distinctions between uh, physical education and um, leisure based education. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the leisure based education is more on specific behavioral issues. Well, phys physical education is more towards um, performance. So, uh, sports go to development, education is the brief. So, sports and development. So, these are the areas to look at. Sports has a framework. Well, in development, um, sports is more flexible, different levels. It's about individual, it's about uh, how to relate, uh, which one should come first, sports go first, or developmental goals or vice versa. So when you want to decide an education in the context of sports, you have to ask yourself this question, which one comes first? So education is a bridge, see? So it's about the purpose. What is the purpose of sports education? Why you want to educate in sports? And um, uh, so um, this is the process which you have to Follow once you make a decision, it's easier to identify. Uh, the, the benefit of uh, leisure education, uh, sports based uh, education, is that leisure is more flexible. You can adapt. Whereas, uh, so if you are looking at developmental needs, you have to look at what the person, individual wants in terms of development. You see? So, so you have to met, you have to uh, determine which sports activities has to be matched with the development needs. You see, in uh, competitive uh, sports and so on, you know there are very rigid rules and structure, very technical. You have to follow very strictly you know, because at the moment, at the end of it, you want to excel. You want to focus on, you know, to narrow down as you see in the sports development pyramid. Whereas here. You can modify sports. In leisure sports, it's more flexible. See? Uh, see? So, did I miss some side? Uh? Okay, now my. Uh, so, at the end of it, it is not about teaching about sports through physical education alone, but educating. Uh, okay. Uh, in this current global situation of sports, where should the new sports development head for? What should be the new priorities for sports? Whether it's for personal health, economy, development, how should you balance sports with uh, health and development needs? Should there be a new paradigm shift? What form of education for sports? Who should be targeted in the new normal of sports? Will sports be extrinsic or intrinsic? In the leisure context of sports, it's more of intrinsic, whereas in the uh, performance excellence part of sports, it is more extrinsic. See? So, how should sports education or studies be approached in this new norm? So, to conclude, sports in this educational approach or educational development to sport is not about just uh, educating yourself to perform. Uh, to develop your body, to perform, to excel, but it's about, and it's not so much about teaching. In the non formal approach, it's about educating rather than teaching, and it's about facilitating and empowering how to make informed decisions on how to use sports for development through different learning approaches. There is no, you know, I, I cannot suggest any specific. Uh, curriculum in this context of uh, education because it, it has to be very customized to, to different needs, you see. So it has to be developed, uh, this sort of formal education has to be developed for specific different needs. And of course, 
if any of you are familiar with uh, Confucius, to him, learning is doing and understanding. What I hear, I forget. Maybe you have realized as a student yourself, if everything the teacher taught you, how far can you remember everything that you are taught? What I see, you remember. So that is a visual part of it. But in holistic education, it's very action-oriented. That's where my, my gears concept comes in. The very action and experientially oriented. So this is my message to you. And that's your food for thought for future sports and physical education. Thank you. Also, see you guys again. And then, uh, yeah, this is a photo of me in a hiking trail where my niche is in the outdoors. So that's all I have to share for now. I'm not sure I'm within time or not, or I already exceeded. But um, is that all right? Everything? I'm mm -hmm. open to anybody who wants to clarify anything. Okay. Yes, I'm going to stop sharing. Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us a very much valuable speech on education development through leisure sports. Uh, sir, now we move on to the question and section. Uh, first question raised by the participants Can you differentiate the leisure time and recreational time? Um, differentiate leisure time and recreational time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, give me a minute. Me... Can you differentiate the leisure time and recreational time? Hang on, hang on. I lost my, I lost your slide. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. I let me exit my slide. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. There are, there's a difference. Actually, I did elaborate. There's a, some distinction between leisure and recreation. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, leisure can be can be casual. Anytime time that is free from obligation. Uh, you leisure time are time left over where where you are not obligated to do anything. You can use it whatever you want to do. Okay, it's a free time and it has a state of mind. It is something which you uh, uh, which is very casual and spontaneous. Um, so it's it, it's sort of a, an a, an obligated time. Uh, it's time where you have left over where you know. Well, recreation. Uh, there is a they are actually related leisure and recreation. Recreation has additional elements of uh, being recuperative, recharging, developmental as well. You see? Well, uh, they have overlapping characteristics. Recreation also has to do with leisure, but it has an additional element of uh, being engaged, being organized to get yourself with a purpose that you do something for positive relationship can be sometimes can be very neutral uh, and it has to be very, but whatever it is, both are voluntary. You know, that is why I, um, that is where uh, professional and elite sports are not considered leisure because they are considered work. Uh, if you look at uh, some definitions and so on, concepts about leisure, uh, especially by Robert Siding on the three leisure perspective, that is the uh, the main distinction between uh, leisure sport and competitive or sporting excellence is one is work because you are working, you are doing full time, you are you are not obligated, you are forced to train because you want to excel. Whereas in the leisure sport, you do it for fun, for free, for pleasure, for your own well being. And then you inject it with recreational elements to towards uh, positive outcomes. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Here you highlighted about the difference between performance and development, physical science and social science, health mm -hmm. and sports. And also yeah, you highlighted that current sports and public health activity. Thank you, sir. It's also a very wonderful and informative section, sir.
to enlighten the good knowledge for all participation participants in the in this conference on behalf of ymc college management correspondent secretary principal organizing secretary staff and students we appreciate ex excellent presentation and we are honored you uh, honored you are be a part of this conference as a token of appreciation we could like to present a e certificate which is displayed virtually on the screen kindly ask it sir yeah sure i'm honored to uh, accept the certificate but yes. please do be available email to me <laughs> so i can download and see all yeah. right okay sir okay. thank you sir all right thank you uh, it's a pleasure sharing my ideas of course uh, i don't give you on the side answers i give everyone some food for thought No. To look about the new paradigm, new shift towards education in sports. Yes, All right, thank you, everybody, and George for uh, inviting me. I hope I share some new ideas with your sports fraternity. Uh, we'll look forward to see you again sometime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if you want the slides, I can send it to you later. If you want to keep it for your reference, just message me. Okay, right? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Warm good afternoon to all. It is my great pleasure and privilege to deliver the word of thanks on behalf of OMC College of Physical Education, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. At this outset, I thank Almighty for providing the grace, wisdom, and strength to organize this international conference, making 2021 a successful one. My profound thanks to Honorable Chief Guest Professor Dilip Kumar Dureha, former Vice Chancellor, Ellen IPE Valia, for inaugurating this conference. Thank you, sir, for your valuable presence over here. I especially thank the guest of honor, Professor E. J. Jacob, former director of physical education, University of Calcutta, Calicut, Kerala, for his thought-provoking message. I would like to thank the guest of honor, Dr. Suresh H. Despande, director, H. P. P. Mandel, Am Amvarthi, Maharashtra, for sharing your valuable thoughts. It is my great pleasure to thank the guest of honor. Professor Lucy Vergis, former principal, Government Physical Education College, Cal Cal Calicut, Kerala, for her remarkable speech. My sincere thanks to the special guest, Dr. L. K. Singh, former principal, Abhihari Institute of Physical Education, Guwahati, Assam, for your valuable inputs to all the participants. I sincerely thank the resource person, Professor Van Abdul Man Van Munda, Professor Alma. At, uh, University Indonesia for his informative and very in a interesting speech we thank you sir i truly thank the resource person dr soman khanuman department of physical education qatar university doha qatar for enlightening us with his knowledge the session was full of knowledge and industry thank you so much sir my sincere thanks to the resource person dr anup adhikari excess physiologist level 4 kin anthropometrist red cross training partner isik canada for enlightening us with the rich knowledge on kin anthropometry thank you so much sir i truly thank the resource person dr lee kwan meng associate member institute for social science studies university putra malaysia for enlightening us with his knowledge the session was full of knowledge and interesting thank you so much sir my immense gratitude to, gratitude to the board of management our correspondent and secretary mr benjamin franklin sir administrator and estate manager mr rajiv george for their great support and guidance i would like to thank our principal dr george abraham for his enthusiastic support and hard work to organize this international conference and making this conference in a meaningful manner we thank you sir also i extend my heartfelt gratitude to the faculty members of ymc college of physical education and sincere thanks to mrs mebilda who worked without time limit in the uh, presentation of brochure zoom platform and certificate to the to be given on time to all the participants and adding to that i would like to thank mrs janet who also played her immense role in organizing this conference finally my sincere thanks to all the participants present here for paying your attention 
and learning throughout the program once again i thank all of you for making it a great success thank you so much to one and all have a great day thanks to our organizing secretaries dr g gobi and dr sadesh kumar thank you for sir. your great effort to make this program in a grand success and i extend thanks to the participants for your active participation for this international conference thank you okay thank you sir dear participants feed, feedback link is on the chat box kindly fill it you will get your certificates uh, within 3 days of working days feedback form will be available for only for 2 uh, hours kindly fill it and get benefited thank you all